Come with me if you want to play D&D. Hello, and welcome to High Rollers D. I've got sunglasses on at the time. Oh, right, that's it. Oh, that's okay, it. okay. That's okay. it. Oh. Da, da, da. <laughs> and then I'll just sink down under the table. Got my like leather this. jacket. Hang on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on. Sam, we're going to redo that. Yeah, redo. <laughs> it's a redo. If this, if this fits me, Reed. Cut. <laughs> How can you wear leather on a day like this? It's so hot. Okay. <laughs> that does not fit. <laughs> it's very swimming. Come with me if you want to play D&D. Boom, boom, boom. It was worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it for the joke. You thought you couldn't get silly intros now that we were in the studio. No. Guess what? You're wrong, audience. You're wrong, chat. Gamers. Nice. Oh, look, it was me all along. <laughs> oh, welcome to High Rollers D&D. Yay. Uh, I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Shulick Humes. Thanks very much for joining me. This week, we have... We've got Trot and Where's Ree? Tim. Where's Ree? Oh, God. We lost her. She's gone. She's still at Milton Keynes Stadium. Milton Keynes. No, she's not. She's on the other side. With <laughs> Tom Hello. 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 You don't have to worry. Yeah, she's so on lose her. We didn't lose her. We have lost Katie temporarily. Uh, she's gone back up to Scotland. We don't know where she is in Scotland, <laughs> she's so technically she's lost. Uh, <laughs> she's, uh, we left her up there. We don't know where she is. It's like home alone. Um, ah, you know, she's screaming, doing all of that. Uh, but no, no Katie this week. She is visiting family at home. Um, but we've got everyone else, and we're going to play some Dungeon Dragons. Uh, some people... <laughs> all right. Do you want to cut to the wide, Sam, and we can show off uh, these two idiots. Uh, thank you very much to Crispy and Peggles uh, from our chat. Uh, Peggles did the amazing art. Tom is wearing their Shansara Tour T-shirt. Oh, yeah. These aren't for sale. So cool. They just made this as a cool design, and they, they paid to have them made into a few shirts that they've then sent out to oh, us and for us to wear. Um, it's awesome. So that the Kim, the shirt that Kim is wearing is a bit of a joke <laughs> from Crispy. Uh, I drew that on a stream in MS Paint, and Crispy's now made it into a shirt. So it's your fault. That's my fault. Yeah, That's totally. that was my interpretation of a sexy Starbane T-shirt. Very nice. So thank you very much. And then also on the other side, if you want to flip back over to Tom and Ree, uh, we also say a big thank you to a lot of different artists. I These believe Kim Crispy helped organise putting it together into the tarot deck. But is there anybody else that was Peggles? Peggles Wait. as well. But there's lots Peggles of artists. Was Kirsten was involved somehow, and know, loads of artists. Yeah, Kirsten, oh, Fail, Pump Candle, there's loads of different artists all work together. I, I don't want to name names because I'm going to forget people. Uh, but thank you very much, all very the artists cool. and Crispy again, for organizing the tarot It's very, very cool. Uh, thank you very much for this. I noticed we'll get... on the back there is a red star. Oh, who Who's could that be? Doing doing red there? star. Right. Um, the one. Very, very fun. We've got a couple of things to talk about, and then we will roll into a <laughs> recap. Um, Oh, very good. Raunchy. Uh, right. <laughs> Couple of quick things. We mentioned it last week. I want to do a reminder. High Rollers will be at TwitchCon Amsterdam. Woo! Coming up in July, I believe, 16th and 17th, I Twitch want to say. Con. Yeah. TwitchCon. Um, Kim sadly won't be joining us, but we will be there for a very special reason, because we are going to be doing a live prologue of Campaign 3. What? This is going to be a super early look into the world of Althea, Campaign 3 setting. Um, the, 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 the people on stage won't be playing their final characters. They're going to be playing uh, different characters, maybe characters that might become NPCs in the main campaign. We're going to see what happens. What? Um, but that is going to be on Saturday, we think, at TwitchCon Amsterdam around 2 p.m. ish. We don't have an exact time just yet, just yet. That will be locked in. Follow us on Twitter and all of that and we will post about it there. Um, but yes, if you can go to TwitchCon Amsterdam, you want to come and see the live prologue, come do so in the main stage. It will also be broadcast on Twitch, but it's not going to be the same. We've got some really fun stuff planned for the live audience and you'll probably get to come and chat to us and meet us and talk to us and stuff like that as well. So come along if you can, TwitchCon Amsterdam um, and let them know High Roller sent you. Uh, another thing, this is the very last week to get your I Wish I Were a Birdie t-shirt to yes. celebrate the yeah. wonderful wish <laughs> that happened. Uh, this is going to be your last week to get it. It's on Fresh Merch, which is our, our merch provider. If you just search Fresh Merch, you can find the High Rolls collection and you can get your I Wish I Were a Birdie t-shirt there. We're not going to make it ever again, so if you want it now, you better buy it. Mm. Um, 
there's a couple of things, if you guys don't mind, a couple of specific things for me that I wanted to announce as well. Um, the first big one being, uh, I'm gonna be at something called D&D in a Castle, which has been running for very many years now. It's a very awesome experience where you get to come and play like 20 hours of D&D in a castle over a weekend. You get all your food, there's activities to do. There's gonna be a ton of other amazing DMs there as well. Um, we're also gonna be chatting to them about doing maybe some high roller stuff as well, but I'm gonna be doing a specific weekend, September 2nd to the 6th at Lumley Castle, with D&D in a castle. Um, I think that I might only have two seats left at my table. So if you want to get in on that and you want to play a whole weekend of D&D with me, it's your last chance probably to do that. Oh, so shit. go and check that out. That sounds like an actual dream come true. I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Can you imagine sitting at a well. table with Mark? I know. Yeah. 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 Holy crap. Mm. I couldn't. No? No. Well. What a dream. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, I appreciate it. Get a ticket. Uh, get a ticket. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think there's only two seats left. Um, a bunch of people have already picked this. Uh, grab oh, them and them. announce them. Are you good? Then you could spend a weekend with me, Chris. Yes. Trot. In a you castle. Do that in a castle. Playing D and D. Yeah. yeah. You get to spend a weekend with me. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> um, but yes. So that's really awesome. Uh, look forward to that as well. We might be doing some more stuff with D and D in a castle soon. But I just wanted to announce my table. This is probably going to be the last chance to grab it. And then the last thing is, well, is if you're going to MCM London Comic Con this weekend, which is happening this weekend. That's the 27th, if you're watching this on VOD or on Twitch. Um, I'm gonna be around on the Friday and Saturday. Friday, I'm just there, I'm just a punter. I don't have a signing or table just or anything like that. Just a punter, but I'm gonna be wandering around. If you see me, you wanna grab a picture, you want me to sign your D&D books, just come up and say hi and, and I'll do that happily for you. So um, I'm gonna try and set some time on the Friday to find somewhere quiet to just go and meet people. Um, and then on the Saturday, I'll be there. I'm gonna go into the Critical Role fan meet, but I might be in disguise. You might have to try and figure out who I am. Uh, it's not gonna be hard. Hard to just go on my Twitter and Instagram and you'll find out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> One of a million Spider-Men Deadpool and Wolverine <laughs> X-Men. Uh, so yeah, uh, so I'm gonna be there as well. So if you're going to London Comic Con, I would love to see you. Come say hi, grab a picture, I'll sign your books, whatever. I'll sign anything. Um, oh. As Tom once quoted me as saying, I'll do anything for money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's recorded. It's recorded. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Is there anything else from the team? Oh, Kim. I have an announcement. Re and I saw My Chemical Romance this week. Yeah, we did. It was really good. It was really good. Look. Yeah. Genuinely yeah. Banty, we were do yeah. There you go. It was really fun. We, the banty. Yeah. yeah. My Chemical yeah. Romance, if you listen to the High Rollers DD podcast. <gasps> we love you! Please come play with us. That'd be amazing. Jared Way, come to the table. Please. My Chemical Romance, you have an open invite to come and play High Rollers Please. DD. Just slack off your gig tonight yeah, yeah, and come yeah, join yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Milton, yeah, you don't need to go to Milton after, after they're finished touring, yeah, they'll yeah, want to wind yeah. down. Come join us. Yeah, it'd be amazing. There you go. TikTok, okay. Clippers, you've got full permission to send that and yeah. spam. Send it to <laughs> Gerard. Yeah. Spam Watch Gerard way. Yep, yeah. about <laughs> an invite to play d and I'm sure you'd love it. Uh, anything else? Exactly. Anything? Promotion-wise, anything we need to talk about? Anything we need to mention? I'm trying to think who I want to join. No, uh, we're sending invites out. Um, <laughs> any, any famous celebrities you would Macaulay like? Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> <laughs> sat next to him. Uh, you know? uh, <laughs> nice. You're good for the fun now. Uh, Just a whole table of Tom looking like <laughs> celebrities <laughs> would be amazing. That would be amazing. You could have um, Spock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who else? There's a footballer as well. Oh my god. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. On, on, to get away from that, um, as a very quick reminder, don't forget if you sign up on Patreon, you can support the show. Uh, you can also subscribe. If you've got Amazon Prime, you can subscribe here on Twitch um, or buy our merch. Those are all great ways to support us. Or just tell people about the show. It's always the biggest one. Go out there and get the word of high rollers out there. Mm. Uh, with that, let us play some Dunduns. We'll do a recap and then we'll play some D&D. Hell yeah. Woo! Woo! Lewis. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that stayed in. <laughs> we'll find out if that made the cut. He said shut up really aggressively, okay? It makes sense. <laughs> Oh, the best thing is Tom has to edit all oh, of this out. Yeah, we we normally try about... and do the clean intros yeah. for the nice YouTube video. Oh, we were just talking YouTube about that. Oh, That's we right. About Tom, Tom can edit it all out. Oh, I was ready to go. That's why I said shut up, because I knew oh, two, I could see the two seconds. Should I do my thing about Nans now? No. Yeah, you yeah. might as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. So just Free bonus before, intro. I meant, we to, like I meant your to say this in the intro, but basically I was streaming yesterday, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was in my chat, basically said that their Nan, they were talking to their Nan recently, and their Nan said that she used to play D and D when she was younger, and then her nan went, "Oh, I've been watching some D and D shows recently. Have you heard of High Rollers D and D?" So we just want to give a shout out. So whoever you are, mysterious nan, we love you. Oh, yeah, we love you. Mysterious nan. I want to play D and D with you. I want to roll dice with you. There's our new, there's our new song. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do a clean intro. So Sam, if you could fade to black and then fade back in, and I'll do a proper intro. Get your laughs out now. Oh. Oh. The sun's out. Right. Oh. So Hello, welcome back. Last time on High Rollers, the champions of Erois were in the process of helping the Titan Valena forge an artifact called the Star Seed. A device that houses the knowledge, memories, and magical essence of Erois, and it acts as a beacon for the souls in the afterlife to follow it to another universe, should this one fall to Hadar's hunger. The process had been extremely challenging, and Valena heavily weakened. However, Valor manifested a fragment of her true divine nature, and through ma manipulation of time and space, altered the challenge to give our champions a fair chance. With Quill completing the Knowledge Foci and no Nova the Connection Foci, it was down to Sentry, who made contact with the Hope Foci. After a moving and powerful exchange, and Sentry stating her hope for an Erois that no longer needed heroes, the Starseed was completed. An exhausted, drained Valena laid down her hammer for the last time and took the party to witness the completion of her other project. The second task she had been given by Siaska, a tool for those who would rise up against their enemy. Transporting the party to the surface in the oceans of the Hawkstorn Archipelago, the champions witnessed an enormous vessel emerge from beneath the waves, a section of the arcane metropolis of Solvin restored and adapted, converted into a colossal astral battleship, the Astoria. While the Astoria and the gemstone constructs left to operate it in the champion's hands, Valena gave up her divine essence and rejoined with Siaska in the halls of infinite resplendence. And that is where we pick up this week. Very well done, Tom Hazel, for resisting the laughs. I could see Thank you there. You. Thank very you. good job. Thanks. Um, it was a struggle. Yeah. Uh, but yes, after a very, very good episode last week, um, and I think well, we have to don't put pressure on. No, you. no. <laughs> but uh, and a very, some very powerful statements uh, are connected through the folk guide for for knowledge and for connection, and of course for hope as well. Uh, you guys, yeah, now are stood in the halls of infinite resplendence, having witnessed, and, and you can now sense that Siaska's power is greatly restored. You know, this this third Titan that's now rejoined her third of her children to uh, rejoin the essence of the of the god uh, has empowered her greatly. Um, and yeah, uh, what is the next, what's the plan? What do you guys want to do? Didn't we just get a uh, message saying that we've, oh uh, no, uh, Sayana said <coughs> that they've found... Yes, Sayana had told you that she is, uh, you know, Sayana, uh, the sort of uh, goddess of sort of like, um, song and sort of joy and, or, and a lot of these kind of traits uh, who takes the form of this sort of elderly halfling has informed you that she's been sort of keeping an eye on Horizon and she's lost most of her divine powers but is still sort of capable of sort of learning and traveling and things like that. Um, but yes, your scouts, your, your guardian scouts uh, have uh, returned and they do seem to have more knowledge about what was going on with Kalara's uh, former paladins, the Order of the Blackened Rose. Um, they have some more information about those. Um, it may very well be that there is more information waiting for you in Horizon. You also have your own information to deliver to your allies, that being the Astoria and what yes, it represents. Yes, we do. Big shit. Yeah. Um, one th a couple of things I was going to clarify from last week. <laughs> 
not quite retcons, but just clarifications. Okay. Uh, one, Mark doesn't really understand scale very well. Um, okay. So when he described the Astoria pre previous three few, cities, I think uh, you said two or three cities <laughs> it might have been a bit big. Uh, <laughs> might have been a bit bigger than what maybe I could conceive of. Right. Um, so it is still very big, um, and it is probably equal in to Horizon in terms of uh, sort of how many people can fit in, but it is not quite to the size of three cities. Okay. Uh, okay. It's well, very very big. What if um, we put some pressure on you and said, how long does it take to walk from? One point to the other. Long enough. Distance and time is always a strong point. Well, I mean, well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so, I'm so good at those. Uh, it takes long enough for anything important to happen, okay. um, yep. but uh, too long for you to dilly dally in doing so. Um, okay. It, it has narrative amount of time. <laughs> Plot armor amount yeah, of time. It has plot armor amount of time. Yeah. Um, but it's, it is very, very big. And yeah, I think the best sort of like, uh, sort of out of character descriptions of it are thinking of things like the Macross from the, the famous anime series, I'll a Star Destroyer, a, shut up, uh, a Star Destroyer, some like a big capital ship like Battle, uh, like uh, Battlestar Galactica or Hell like yeah. these kind of big capital An aircraft ships. carrier. A, a bit bigger than an aircraft carrier. Two so aircraft looking, carriers. Sort of, yeah. Like a, yeah. So I don't want to give a number because Three. that was my issue. Uh, <laughs> it is big and fits lots of people in it. Um, the other thing I was going to clarify is one of the things no that D1 mentioned to you, this this diamond construct that has been left by Valena to help run the Astoria. Um, they mentioned something about assigning a commander to the Astoria, right? <clears throat> and they suggested that it probably shouldn't be uh, like Lucius or one of you because they'll need to coordinate a lot of other things. And you guys are kind of like the strike team that's going to go out there and do stuff. The Astoria is like the big backup to like be the powerhouse of the fleet. Um, one thing I wanted to clock couple of things with that I wanted to clarify. One, it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who is a military commander, right? Like Lucius, you need somebody who's a good leader, who can inspire people around them. Um, somebody who maybe does have a, you know, a slight ability in tactics or knowledge or things like that, but also somebody that could assemble a team. This, the, the Astoria will have a bridge crew effectively. It won't just be one person controlling the whole thing. You know, that. It, think of it like the Enterprise or another famous sci-fi ship, right? You have the captain and the captain's issuing were, orders you? and, you know, <clears throat> they, they need to be a good leader and have a good understanding of everything, but they can have their weapons expert, they can have their tactical expert, they can have their science officer, their, you know, they can have these data. kind of positions, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so don't feel like, because it is going to be up to you guys to pick who the commander is, that commander can then also pick a bridge crew, uh, and that will probably be down to the NPC and who they trust and stuff like that. Well, so you want to pick somebody you think is going to pick good people to help them, um, but he's going to be a good leader most of all. I think I, we're all thinking the same thing, right? What? No? What? No. Huh? Howard. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nice. Can you imagine? Uh, but I'll, leave, I'll leave that. That was just a couple of clarifications from last week that I thought of when I was, okay. you know, in the time between, I was like, oh, two cities is quite big, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's a bit big. Yeah. Um, it's giant. That's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bristol, Swindon, and Reading. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was also like looking at like, you know, like pictures of like the um, Macross and stuff like that. And it's this enormous like capital ship and it still is built in a city. And I was like, yeah. oh, I should probably get <laughs> 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 you imagine that, building a city <laughs> well, because, city. I guess like, it was the throwing me off is like Star Destroyers as well. It's yeah, like, you see yeah. Star Destroyers, they're massive. Yeah. And then there's the Super Star Destroyer, which is like bigger than that. And then there's the Eclipse Climb. I mean, I was just like, I'm, I'm getting lost. I need to yeah. focus down. Um, but yes, it is big. I, hmm. I, 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 it's bigger I, than I... Callus' ships. <laughs> That's <laughs> the main yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's all we need to know. Yeah. I had some ideas for who could maybe be a potential candidate for the Astoria. By all means. Yeah. I need some help from Centre, though. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, <clears throat> mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, because Solwyn's quite, still quite mysterious to me, but I was thinking that it is a city of guardians, so surely it should be run by guardians. Um, mm. And I know Rook, Rook kind of, you know, has, has gone, but Bishop appeared? Um, and, and if I remember, I don't know if I remember correctly, I was getting hit on the head a lot at the time. Did you work with Rook and Bishop when... I did. I worked with... Rook was in the chain of command. Uh, they were a part of um, Queen Astoria's military alongside me. Um, I think Bishop was also... I didn't see Bishop quite as much as Rook, but Bishop was also quite high in command. So they have a good, they have a good military mind. Would Bishop be a, can a good candidate or...? A <coughs> couple of things. Rook and Bishop were bodyguards of Queen Astoria. 
Um, so they were high up in the command, they did have, but they were like her royal protectors, basically, which is why Rook carried Her Majesty's Rose. The other thing is, is Solvin wasn't a guardian city. The guardians were helped, you know, they helped, they were kind of, um, not built there, but they were sort of, you know, created and, and if helped it was protect the foundation, it. The, the it was certainly place. the foundation of it, but it wasn't, it was, the city was, you know, a human elf, dwarf, like, kind of city. Mm. But yeah, guardians kind of were like a, a key part of its yeah. defense, yeah. but it wasn't a guardian city. I just wanted, in case that was, you know, if but that was I would, a mistake. I would. I would still think, thank you, yeah. voice of God. Um, <laughs> I would still, I'm just going to uh, maybe take that as like yeah, century sure. clarifying it. I, I would still, I associate Guardians with Solven, and yeah, it would I mean, feel wrong for Solven not, Astoria not to have Guardians at the helms. That makes sense. I think having some Guardians on the ship would make them feel, well, very honored to be still a part of Solven in some way as well. And I think it would be something that would suit them Really well, actually. Yeah. Solving problems. Solving problems. Yeah. Well, the other thing with the Guardians, and this is something Sentry would know, is, I mean, you have all these different lives and, and sort of, you know, souls of these, these Guardians in the Matrix. You know, it's not just soldiers. You have, like, people there that can operate systems and engineers and architects and stuff like that. You know, there are many Guardians there. Um, you have sort of... In, you know, most of the guardians that are physically exist in Erois, you already gave life back to, so they already kind of exist, and there's going to be a mixture of types and, and, and types out there and things like that. Um, the, if you wanted to bring somebody who isn't, hasn't been replenished, I think Bishop has been replenished, and is, is now existing in a body somewhere. Mm. Um, if you wanted to bring somebody else, you would need to find a, a, a guardian body that doesn't yeah. have a soul in it and, and put them in. Um, with Bishop, I think you would know... Yeah, Bishop was, yeah, more of a bodyguard, um, kind of like in a similar role to you and Rook. Like, you and Rook both kind of trained and you were uh, Petal's protector and Rook and, and Bishop were the Queen of Storia's protectors. Um, would certainly be a very good candidate in some form, maybe not as an overall commander, didn't necessarily have the leadership quality, was more of a follower. Um, was definitely somebody who was used to taking orders rather than giving them. But certainly could certainly would be a very valuable member of a team, uh, especially like a, a bridge crew or like a you know a security force or something yeah. like that would be very good. Cool. Um, and 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 you know you would have to spend some time in the matrix, but you could search and see if there was more of a leader type. You know somebody that I mean in a way like Root chose you to become the inheritor of the pri of of the matrix when you know Root could no longer function and he chose you because you displayed leadership qualities you know having worked with the team and things like that there will be a, there may come a day when Sentry needs to pass the matrix yeah. on and like this may be a good chance to start searching for somebody that may be able to take on that mantle one day yeah so but you need to spend time searching through the matrix so there's thousands hundreds of thousands of souls drifting around there so cool definitely something you could spend some time to do nice nice Hold your own job in abuse. Yeah, effectively. Nice. Yeah, one day. Uh, mm. So th that conversation obviously takes place, but what, what about, like, where do you guys want to go? Are you guys going to go back to Horizon? Is there anything else you guys want to do um, beforehand? Any questions you've got for Valor or Sayana while you're here? I don't know. I feel like we asked a lot last time. Mm. Um, the The... Uh, Storm Chaser is currently docked in the Astoria now, right? Yeah, they basically, like, they emerged from the ocean uh, and cool. then they've kind of connected up with the Astoria, yeah. Which means that you have a, a Wayfinder's Guide straight back. Oh, true, yeah, I've got it on the Storm Chaser. Yes. Nice. And you've also, uh, Nova's been there now, so it's much easier to, to transport there and use teleport. There's a slight risk with teleport, but... Oh, they well, said they had their own very good. circles anyway, right? They do, actually. Yeah, that's true. They have their teleportation. Yeah, you would know those sequences. So I you can use teleportation circle or teleport. Diary. So very easy and, and rapid to access. Yeah. I say we reconvene on the Storm Chaser. Okay. Uh, we sort of discuss our next steps there and discuss the Astoria's plan as a whole. Because I think there could be something very valuable with people of Aroas and uh, that sort of thing that makes sense so yeah and we need to show this to horizon and the people there uh so they know not to fire at us immediately thinking we're some kind of weird new starbane ship we can scout ahead yeah and then alert horizon of our coming i can and it's not a huge starbane ship <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i'd say that's a good starting point yeah. Valor will turn to say, well, if you're going to head back to the Storm Chaser, I think I'll take Max and myself back to Horizon. Uh, I need to start researching and, and planning for 
um, breaching Kalara and Atelicus's demiplanes. We, we, it sounds like Sam has said that you have some information on that. I, I need to prepare for that, so I need to sort of hit the books and start thinking about that. Um, so I can meet you back at Horizon if you're coming back that way? Definitely, yes. We'll discuss our next plans for the next demiplane. All right, yes, all right, uh, all right, well. Hopefully uh, you find something, Valor. Yes, I think so. I think that I, I was close before. Um, uh, we're quite lucky that Valena uh, sort of invited us here. She was one that I really didn't know where to begin with. So the fact that we had this sort of information was a great boon. Kalara and Atelicus, Atelicus is the same. I, I really don't know even know how or where to begin with him. He's, he's a little very different to the others. Kalara, I have a strong suspicion that whatever your scouts tell you, I think that that will be very heavily connected to Kalara's demiplane, and uh, the breach point won't be too far from there. All right, I just need to find the right spot. Um, we'll get a debrief from our scouts, and yes. we'll reconvene with you in the library? Yes, I mean, I can meet you there, yeah, or the war room. Um, Maybe somewhere else, because the last time we met, there, well, or heading to there, we were attacked. Yeah, so. can, well, we can only hope that uh, that won't happen again. Um, True. Do Just you want superstitious as well? I, I can also tell Danica a little of what's happened, so that at least she's a bit more aware of, of the Astoria and, and everything a forward, else. Forward party. Yes. Scouting yes, for the scouts. Yes, of course. I'm happy to mention that to them. If you could, I think it's probably best if we alert, well, not alert, tell the Storm Chaser crew what's going on, rather than go straight to Horizon and leave them in the dust on Astoria, a huge multiple city. It looks like at least three cities. Oh, not big. three. It's it's big, but not three. Think about it in, in terms of scale of like Horizon, Gusthaven. Yes, I suppose you're yeah, right. It's about big ship, very big ship, bigger than, than Starbanes. You think so? That yeah. is true. It is larger than most of the, it is larger than any ship I've seen in the Valkyrian fleet. Phenomenal. So yes, we should really let the storm chasers know what's going on. <laughs> hmm. Very well. I'll accompany you as always, my lady. And Valor will just turn to Max and say, of course, I know. Um, right, well, we will see you back on Horizon. Um, oh, wait, do we uh, have any uh, information about the Starseed? Is that just... It's gone. That's just out there now? It, yeah, it, uh, Valena just sort of... It just vanished from her hands. Oh. Uh, it went into the with her brother. well of... Yeah, with her brother, Paldor. Yes. To go to the Well of Eternity. Okay. Yes, there was, there was, she basically said that uh, if the worst happens and Hadar wins, the, the sun ship will basically fire the star seed into the Well of Eternity and that will take it to a new universe. And then the hope is that the Fate Weavers that you met, the three dryad sort of uh, powerful fate sorcerers, will cut this universe off from everywhere else, um, basically sealing this universe's fate. Cool. Well, but the star it. seed. Well, that's, you're going to hope. Uh, I hope. Right, well, I ask. Uh, she will take Max's hand and the two of them she will focus and you see uh, that sort of triangle of purple light open up behind her and it sort of swallows them and they vanish. I've got to learn how to do that. Bye! I really need to ask her how she does that. I want to learn how to do that. Mm. You think where we've come from when Valor was just a young girl mm. Oh, I and her father <laughs> took her to a city. To see yeah. a... Don't. Just don't. You can see it. I mean, we always No, said I, was, I was generally going to make a point and then I... We always said her. that Valor, when she grows up, that she'll be a saviour of the broken, the beaten and the damned. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, for her... Katie, um, I really miss you. <laughs> I wish you were here to for help her. split this madness up. <laughs> right. For her to be just this... Small, unaware girl yeah. with such tragedy around her to a god. And we're a part of that intrinsically. That's it's just good to step back now and again. We are in the halls of resplendence right now. Sion is right there. Hi, Sion. <laughs> she just not she just sort of waves. And like she's been listening, like she just doesn't speak or anything. Just overwhelming is all. Oh, I've definitely had my moments. Uh Champion of Hesper, you know, uh, font of knowledge, apparently. Um, you died. I died. I did. Why does that keep coming up? You died too. I, yeah. Yeah. But you're alive now. That's what's important. Yeah. You're a bird. You, you are, yeah, you're I'm a bird. bird. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I keep forgetting that one. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to do something about that. Tian Gong's here. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. 
I mean, you look are back. Tiangong. Tiangong Eternal's triumphant, right here. Mm. We are Dealing eternal. Larger mm. things than ourselves, and we're at the forefront of it all. Yeah. No pressure. Ayla's a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. A world tree. I, I don't still don't understand that fully. No, nah, me neither. Yeah. Um, Sion will just say like, it is. It is always the way. Uh, across many stories, across eons. It is always a strange coincidence of such tales that often our greatest heroes are brought together very quickly in a very short space of time and so much coalesces around them. Uh, it is, whether it is the power of destiny, the power of one's will, clearly something differentiates you from everyone else. Uh, it is no mere chance, it is something. It is good, as you said, to step back and look on these things and to realize how far you've come. Don't you know, step too far back, though, because then you realize that <laughs> the fate of the entire okay, yeah, universe is on us and uh, our friends. So, Hey, did you know that we almost missed the airship? The one that crashed? We almost didn't get on it. You didn't? Mm. We were going to go get cake, remember? Yeah, we were. That was really nice bakery. I ensured that... My first airship would be on time. It was the first time I was taking control, and you were just going to not turn up. I had a handwritten itinerary. I, I was there an hour early. Oh no, we we, we almost yeah. We went to get some. Wow. It looked really good. It was like had like like brown stuff on it, and it was like cream and. Yeah. Oh, but imagine we should, we should go back. Well, we should go back. But imagine if we never got that. If we did go get the cake. Yeah. I don't want to think about it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Let's go see the storm chasers, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, everyone, circle oh, up. Cake. You know how this works now. Yep. Uh, expect a charge on the wayfinder's guide. Bam. You're back on the storm chaser. I'm not going to get too narrative with it. We've done it a million times. Boom. Could have um, teleported from the helmet. Yeah, you could have done. Saved you a charge in your book. Oh, it, yeah, but. Book. Book. It's a book in it. Got book. Book in it. I can do it every uh, once a day. Every got day. book. You got book, so. arrive back on the storm chaser uh, to a. Not necessarily bewildered crew, but certainly a crew that is like wide-eyed in everything. Um, the Storm Chaser has indeed docked in built into sort of the rocky underbelly of the Astoria because it's mainly a city and then it's like a rocky hull, kind of carved, still rough textured, like it's not been perfectly carved, but shaped into like the hull of a ship. Um, built into the sides of it are hollowed out sections that act as like hangar bays, basically where ships, airships can be docked. Uh, there are gangways, metal and stone. The whole construction is um, very reminiscent of Solvin architecture with a lot of metal, like a lot of metal. Like normally you guys have been to cities, even the sky cities have, you know, stone buildings and things like that. It's very rare to see so much metal used here. Um, so, and some of it definitely looks like it is, you know, mithril, adamantine, like it is pretty, pretty rare stuff. Um, vast amounts of, of iron and steel and everything else kind of built together. Um, there are sections of crystalline material that you've seen in other astral ships as well. Um, you're not sure where that's come from, if that's natural mineral or, or what. Um, but yeah, the actual interior is this kind of enclosed space. Um, it does look like it would just look out onto the sky or out into astral space from one end of it, but you don't know how that necessarily functions. Um, and there are staircases that lead up, there are corridors that lead into the interior, uh, which is almost like a little underground city street. There are buildings, there are like lights that kind of illuminate like plazas, all built underground. Um, and the, the ceiling is purposely illusioned so that it creates the images of like fake skies. So it feels like you're outside or in, uh, under a night sky and things. It seems to attune Incredible. to the actual day outside. Um, uh, and you find uh, Kamara is basically a few of the crew, Howard, um, Lancian, and I think Penny would have remained on the ship uh, with Araya. Um, but Araya will tell you that, yeah, Kamara and the Wolfpack um, uh, and Howard have basically gone out to start just figuring out how to get around and like what this hangar bay connects to and stuff like that. Um, and they sort of just point you in those directions, but. Okay. How um, how big is a storm chaser in this hangar bay? It looks like about uh, five or six similar sized airships would fit in here, and and the oh, storm okay. chaser is 
a sort of <coughs> medium-sized airship. So it's not the fit, biggest. Some big boys in here. Yeah, there are definitely. You've seen warships like um, the continent of Gisela when you guys went to the city of Glass. Mm -hmm. They actually had some bigger airships, like proper warships, um, with like cannons and things like that, like black powder cannons and stuff like that, um, mounted on them. Um, you could maybe fit like two or three of those in here, uh, but it would be pretty tight uh, uh, beyond that. Um, but like five or six of the medium-sized standard airships would fit in. Nice. Um, pretty nice. cool. Yeah. I was wondering if maybe we should transfer the Twin Star here. Yeah, Ooh, we should. Yeah, the Twin Star's the Twin Star's odd because it's small, like in terms of how many people that can fit inside of it. But its wingspan is quite big, so it would probably take. It's probably about a size of a small airship, so it would take up probably the space of one one Storm Chaser and a bit. So. Uh, just maybe a bit less, but you could definitely a hundred percent. It looks, in fact, I would say that on the the top deck when you guys emerged on the city streets, the entire front half of the city is kept purposely much more clear. There are still towers and turrets, but it's almost like an area is kept clear. It looks like it was once a very wide city street, um, and that is almost kept clear as if for smaller fighters and and like you know magitech devices to be placed and to launch from basically like that motorbike we brought back yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, i mean yeah. that that would be you could drive that around the streets and things like that but yeah the twin star would like probably fit around that and the road's gonna be empty as well yeah. Ugh, mm. rubber. Uh, i was like well you have a big ship very big ship it's very yeah. big yes yeah mm. the dwarven women the gemstone people uh yes. they've been coming by to check and ask us if we need anything um how much do you know very little. They, they've said that this is the Astoria. They called it the Astoria. Uh, they said that it was, it was the, a gift for the people of the Rois, uh, and it, was, it would be, uh, not commanded, but uh, the, 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 the champions of Rois, they called you, they said the champions of Rois will decide on who shall, shall board it and who shall command it. Um, it, was, it was left to you to decide its fate, basically, by the goddess Velena. Well, My understanding? Uh... Just a, just another day on the on the storm chaser, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know exactly as much as us, then. <laughs> well, okay. So yes, that's what we know. This um, is what was being worked on. The great final plan mm -hmm. of solving. Um, and now we need to find a crew. Uh, yeah. For this, assemble the crew for a story because we are obviously preoccupied with the storm chaser. Yes, I mean I would like to stay on the storm chaser. I don't really want to fly a boat. This okay. Week. But that rules you out. Good. It's good. Yes. Well, less to worry about. I think I think the crew and I are all aligned. The Storm Chaser we've come to think of as our home, and uh, we would stay here. Well, and and the Storm Chaser can go in the Astoria anyway. Exactly. Well, so and and the... my understanding as well is you spoke to uh, Miss Perel, the the strange, creepy wizard in in Horizon. Yes. She she had plans to allow the Storm Chaser to go in astral space anyway. We need we need some creatures for the engines. Yes. Uh, two mm -hmm. two magical creatures. Yes, I have the ball. Grats. Yes. To so capture one. If we can install those engines, then then yes, we could dock inside the Astoria. The Astoria goes out into astral space, mm -hmm. and then the Storm Chaser can go where it needs to. Yes, mm -hmm. we should do that. We yeah. really need to give Grotz a call. Mm. We could just taunt him a bit. Yeah. Hey, got your ring, dickweed. <laughs> <laughs> where did you learn that language? I don't know. I think Ayla. Yeah, fair. Yeah. The Wolfpack and Kamara and Howard have gone out to sort of explore and see what they can find. Uh, it does not look like there are any supplies or things like that here. There are no weapons aboard or anything like that. But the the, the functions, the turrets, the built-in weaponry seems to be functional. Uh, yes, uh, D1 and the cohort will mm. be in control of that, so we don't need to worry too much. They just need to be guided by the crew. Oh, the helm of I the think that, well, my the, we were speaking to them about it. They they are apparently not um, soldiers. They cannot fire the weapons. They need gunners and things like that to to target them. Oh. Uh, Penny was speaking to them about it. Um, they they are more concerned with the running of the sort of uh, the technicalities of the ship. Maintenance. Mind. Yes, maintenance, repairing it, keeping it running. Okay, so uh, we need a crew crew as well. Yes, mm -hmm. there is a. Uh, my understanding is that there is a large power. Uh, some sort of magi magical thing that provides power to the ship and the city, I, I guess. It's a fragment of the world engine. That apparently requires a lot of work uh, for the, the maidens Let's to see. maintain and, and upkeep. Um, so their focus is more on keeping the ship running rather than it is navigation, weapons, um, arming it, equipping it, uh, looking around as well, very much like, a, in, in a sense, like a normal airship, you will need people if it was boarded. It can be boarded by another vessel. Uh, they could send troopers to to fight upon it. So we would likely need ground forces as well 
in it, in a sense. Right. Mm. Well, mm. lots to plan. Yeah. Now um, that the Horizon is essentially a uh, floating battleship as well, uh, maybe they ha host a surplus of soldiers uh, that we might be able to... We should maybe send uh, word to all of our allies and see if they can, you know, contribute and, and we can make up a crew of everyone. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Very democratic as well to mm. have everyone represented on Aroas. Maybe even as part of the crew that we select. Mm. I think that would be a, a wise option to get everyone's opinions from all over Aroas. Um, the other thing I was thinking of, by the way, which is why I wanted to hold a meeting, this Astoria is a refugee ship as well. We think that Aroas might be going really, really south. We might need everyone to get on board and leave Aroas if the war wages here. Uh, I mean, it's big, but... As many as we can. Yeah. I don't see why we couldn't maybe utilize Horizon to go to places where war is waging gather as many refugees as possible and ultimately bring them to the Astoria. Uh, do we want to do that before or after the Astoria goes to war against Starbane? See, this is what I'm confused with, about. Mm, lots of but if it's weapons. our only option left, I feel like maybe this is it a should very be defended ship. The last bit, you know, if everything goes completely wrong and the Astoria then maybe goes into space with the last, you know, vestiges of... Aroas, but we probably shouldn't put vulnerable people on the ship and then fight forces that are gonna. Well, I, I, my only concern is that they might already be on a war front, on Aroas. It is hard when your entire planet is at, uh, at war, yes. So it's kind of the lesser of two evils, at least they're in a highly sophisticated floating city that can go into space. That is also probably. It will be a target, a sure. Target, yeah. But it's also got a lot of turrets and uh, maybe where they're from right now doesn't have that many turrets is what I'm saying. It might be the safest option uh, depending on how well it's like on the ground. Exactly. Um, that's, that's all I'm thinking is maybe we send out some uh, or get some intel on the war fronts on or else if there are any um, waging right now and see if there's some people we can save and bring to the Astoria if they no longer have a home. I think, again, we should probably definitely consult with world leaders because they'd have a lot of experience in this kind of thinking, so maybe they could guide us as to what the best plan... Because also, it's their people, so, mm -hmm. you know, we, they, they might want to say. Yeah. I mean, you, you have allies on Horizon, you know that the Grand Strategist is there, you have the Dragons, you have uh, Danica, um, you have Prince Aradan in, in Gusthaven, um, you have... So, uh, Horizon's uh, a good beacon for this. I think we should go to Horizon and... Uh... Yeah tell everyone about the Astoria and offer it as a place for people to go if they no longer have somewhere safe to be. I think one, thing, one thing we should prioritize is some kind of security for the teleportation circles. Yes. yes. Don't want insurgents or any destructive forces to get on the inside. Mm. You're right. Any spies. Yeah, we don't know if there's any magical protection at all on the Astoria. Is there any uh, gem dwarves around? Um, uh, there isn't. You look around, you can't see any. Okay. Um, well, I can definitely ask about I think what protections are in place. Rain could be a good candidate to run that kind of thing. So remember, that's kind of when we first met him, was when we teleported into Horizon. And, uh, Did anything happen when the, the mics do need to pick you up? You can't run <laughs> too much. Um, <laughs> the, the other thing I would say is, like, uh, you, you remember when you first came on the ship, this is for Quill, when you first came on the ship, um, D1 just sort of merged out of the ground. <laughs> uh, it, the, 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 the Maidens of Elena, the Gemstone Doors, like, just seem to have the ability to go where they need to on the ship. So it might be that you don't need to, like, you could probably just say, hey, I need, like, say something, and then one will hopefully appear or something like that. It might be the case of. Or if you speak their name, they might come to you, or you can ask, like, it might be like when Nova's connected to the Storm Chaser, she can hear you wherever you are on the ship. Every. Hmm. It seems to have very similar levels of kind of. There's there's a lot of connections between what Azaria's done on the Storm Chaser and some of the old Solvin Magitek as well. Like, which is very. It wasn't quite magic. It was more enchantments and and things like that. Um, it was much more magic related Solvin stuff. Kalos is more Magitek, and then what Azaria does is closer to Solvin's like high levels of enchantment and magical uh, infusion. 
Um, okay, well, I'll turn back after looking around for them and say, well, I don't know where D1 is. <laughs> so yeah, so when you say D1, you do basically like her face, not her whole body this time, but her face like merges out oh, of the wall. Oh God. Uh, how might I help you, champion? Uh, um, do, can you just appear everywhere? Not quite everywhere, but most places aboard the ship, yes. That's amazing. Okay. Sounded oh, terrifying. A little bit, yeah. Uh, I'm currently engaged in other tasks. Do you have a, a request? Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, so we were going to ask about what magical protections the Astoria has. Let me summon Emerald Four. She has a much better understanding of this system than I do. Okay, E4. Your face kind of like, like disappears. You wait maybe a, a 30 seconds and then uh, kind of walking in, this time just walking in normally, um, is a green... I'm like looking at the wall waiting. Yeah, you're like walking <laughs> in. You hear like f heavy footsteps coming in from a corridor um, and you see this emerald, completely carved in emerald, looks similar to D1, but ever so slight variations, different haircut, slightly different sort of like outfit. So like same grin. face, like same sort of round, cheerful face. Um, Howdy, champions. My name is Emerald Four. How may I assist you? What is your question? Oh, uh, we, we, we were wondering what sort of uh, magical protections the Astoria has. Uh, let's start with the teleportation circles. Protections in what form, champion? Um, who can come and who can go? Anyone who has access to the teleportation sigils can use the teleportation circle. All right. Is there any anti-scrying, maybe? The ship is not protected from divination magic at this time. Okay, um, well, okay, we need to sort that one out, write that down. Write it down. Uh, it's an open door policy right now. Um, Protecting a, such a large vessel from all divination magics would be incredibly difficult. What about just the teleportation rooms? It may be possible to install devices that would prevent divination magics from accessing the teleportation chambers. Okay, that's just a good idea to at least mask the uh, sigils. What about disguises? Is there a way we can detect anyone wearing disguises that may enter the Astoria? Again, it would be difficult to place these sort of beacons across the entire ship. However, it may be possible to place them in strategic locations that would be able to detect any thought of any sort of form of invisibility or illusion. Mm -hmm. uh, physical disguises would not be fooled by these sensors. Okay, illusions. Uh, we have lots of weaponry on the outside of the ship, obviously facing outwards. Is there any defenses? for anything in the streets or in... Currently, all weapons are trained for external uses. Okay, okay. There are no interior turrets or sentries available. It is assumed that the ship will be protected by soldiers provided by the people of Eroas. Yes, yeah, we'll have to have a, a policing force, I'd say, mm -hmm. or a rotation of soldiers helping yeah. with the okay. streets. Um, if the Astoria was to become a salvation, for the people of Aroas, what would you say the maximum population could be? <laughs> she gives you a number that is high, but not too high. Narrative <laughs> high, right? Yeah. Not, not the entire. Not population. the entire. No, no, not even close. Like, <laughs> like again, a fraction. Like yeah, like maybe half worth. of a big city or like a big city's worth. Yeah, yeah. No, nothing. So more. ninety percent. Then. No. Uh, no, this is, yeah, like, it, it, this can carry a lot of people. Uh, almost think of it like a bit of, like, Noah's Ark, right? Like, you could fit a lot of people on here, plenty enough that, like, if you had to repopulate a world, <laughs> you probably could, but not enough to, like, save the entire okay. planet, uh, the entire plane. I should call them planes. Um, okay. Emerald Four will uh, say, also, please keep in mind, any additional magical protections for the interior of the ship, the power, uh, the power of the ship is currently very limited for its current uses, they would need to be provided with external power sources. Right. <sighs> okay. External power. Uh, such as? Magical power sources. Okay. S looks at you blankly like, yeah, no, that's trying to explain like, Azaria. what is air? Yeah, that Breathe sense. air. Ethereum engines. Azaria. Your Ethereum engines would provide a suitable source of power for these sorts of devices. I wonder if Azaria could be a good member of the crew. Uh, it'd also satisfy her need to, um, you know, tear open Sentry. Uh, I, I doubt the Astoria actually has that much that would interest her. Uh, I mean, it's a shard of Solvin. I think it's mm. more her overarching motivations. Is it to save us or is it to, you know... It's to take us all knowledge. apart to find out what makes us tick. It's a pursuit of knowledge at the expense of our bodies. Uh, or centuries in particular. It's quite admirable, really. True. Um, 
Well, let's think about it. How about we go to Horizon? Yep. Speak with all the smarties there, um, and all the leaders as much as we can, like Prince Aradan and Danica. Yeah. Those sorts of people. Oh, is there any navigation equipment on this ship? Yes, the ship is fully is fully navigational equipment. However, we do not currently have the ability. We have no one to control the navigation systems. Okay. Is there a way to send your location or where you currently are to another place? <laughs> like to, to update its presence? Are you able to send messages? Yes. I w D1 is capable of sending messages magically to individuals. Also, please provide a map. <coughs> oh, right, yes. Yeah. If you hold out a map, Emerald 4 just points and says, we are here. When you say, like, is there a way to, like, pinpoint our location, she's, like, draws a little circle on the map, and it's like, all right, yeah. we are there. Yeah. I think if we open a you port of... cast GPS. Right. <laughs> it's also, she can just be like, map, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> you did ask. Oh, so, no, I mean, I, he asked. <laughs> if we have a port of communication with Horizon, it would be useful if Horizon knows where the Astoria is, and vice versa, is all I'm yeah. suggesting. Mm -hmm. It would be possible. We may be able to move the ship very, very slowly, uh, currently, but without a formal navigation crew, it would be very difficult for us to move anywhere quickly. We'll get that crew for you, E4. Thank you, champions. Are you finished? Oh, please go back to your business, unless Mel there's anything before. else. <laughs> okay, she's no, gone. She's yep. gone. Yep. She's yeah. gone. <laughs> All right, fair enough. It looks like they can basically do that wherever there's stone. Wherever there's, they're touching stone, they can just sort of swim through it like it's water. They just Interesting. Do it. I want to do that. But like anything metal or cri uh, crystal, they can also do it with. But anything like metal or non-organic, they can't do that with. Do they have to have a fully connected <laughs> amount of stone to go from one place to another? Uh, they, it has to be, it has to be e equivalent of Interesting like... Interesting question. Uh, it's basically... What about trees? <laughs> can you travel via dirt? <laughs> they can't. Well... Oh, could they travel via dirt? Yes, but not wood. Yeah. So long as it's can connected. They, can they do it through me? Uh, you have metal in you, though, as well, don't you? You have, like, stone, stone metal, and, and metal. vines. They couldn't and do it through dirt. you. No, there's too much wood. Like, the stone pieces of you. They basically, <laughs> to initiate their sort of transport, it looked like they had to have... Uh, Emerald 4 had to be stood on a piece of stone big enough for her body to fit through, right. but you don't know if they need that the whole way. Like, it just looks like they need to be, be able like to, like, compress it. Yeah, she's form or something like that, where they just turn into... It, it's a thing called um, it's a, there's a spell called meld with stone, yeah. and it's they basically can do that in an unlimited right. amount. Okay, and they travel much more quickly. Cool. Um, that's the idea of it. But that's how they get around the ship. Well, that's, that's why there's so much stone elements. What does it sound like? Uh, it, it sounds almost like a kind of like a, a, a liquid melting sound when they kind of like a bloopy gloopy sound. I want to hear. <laughs> so like the T two and <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're very much like the 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 T one thousand. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Kind of like melts in, and then there's no sound. As soon as they're completely engulfed mm. in the stone, you don't hear anything. Can you put them in a cup when they do that? No. Okay. Oh. I uh, think it, it, it's very quick, first of all. Like, when they do it, it's almost like it, they collapse, like, mm. like you know, you just poured water out of a cup. Yeah. Um, but even if you did want to experiment it and try it, like, it's they're still made of crystal, so you'd be like, punk, and, like, your hand would bounce <laughs> off it. I wonder if, like, a member of the, the crew accidentally walks across some stone as an emerald mm -hmm. person. Ooh. It would launch them up in the air. Mm. Explode yeah. or something. Or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would just throw them up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> like standing on a diglet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. No, no, that, I understand. I, yeah, I get that. Um, all right. Um, the yeah, the Astoria. I will tell you now, out of game. Uh, the Astoria really can't move at this point. Yeah. Like it can go very, very slowly, but it's like a crawl. Um, the Storm Chase, however, can move as and when it needs to. Kilek, have you noted where Kilek? Yeah. Sorry, that was just very weird. <laughs> anyway, carry on. Do you like it? It's preferable. Well, I know. I'm just so used to Quill Birdie, from you especially. Yeah. It's just anyway. Carry on. Very well, Keely. So, did you note down where huh? she pointed on the map? Oh, yeah, I know where we are, yeah. We'll let Horizon know, yep. and as it can't move very much, if there's anything that we need to do or bring people to Astoria, there we go. Mm. Yeah. Let's set sail. Yeah. Nice. Aye, to aye. the skies. Right. Yeah, you can recall the crew. Um, ha the Kamara and the wolf pack come back with Howard, like, totally sort of like, this place is nuts. Uh, but they get on board the crew. Um, Storm Chaser can travel pretty quickly. You can reach Horizon, no question. With Horizon, don't forget, Horizon is also quite slow. It's a big city, it takes, and it takes a lot of effort for Danica to move it. Like, she has to basically spend all of her magical power to, to move it. I we're going to have ships ferrying to and from. Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. that would be faster. Like, using airships to ferry people around oh, would be faster. You know what we should do? Hmm? We should enlist Arvel and yeah. his 
Yeah, it's got a trade yes. network. Mm. Trade network. Mm -hmm. He also has, I don't, well, loads of airships. Yeah, thousands. Not thousands, but he has a. He's he said that he has like a trade network of like airships, sailing ships. Hangar space for some. What about, what about Sprocket and uh, Lillian Sprocket? Sprocket. Lillian Sprocket. Mm -hmm. Yes. Use them as like a repair shop. Or inventions for adding more. If we need beacons or yeah. protection, that sort of thing, more power, that sort of thing, yeah. Completely. And Azaria works seems to work well with them. Mm. Nice. All right. Uh, the trip back to Horizon is uneventful. Uh, you Yay. travel back without issue. Um, it probably wouldn't even take you a day. Uh, oh. You'll probably reach with the storm chaser going at max speed. Um, you can get back to Horizon within, I would say, sort of like six hours. Can I have um, a moment with Quill on the ship? Yeah, sure. Of course you can. Yeah. Do what you want. I invite Quill to the captain's quarters. Sentry. Alone. Sentry? <laughs> yes, yeah. He called me Keelek earlier. Is Lucius happy with yeah, me? Yeah, I, I think so. He didn't seem upset. Well, he just also sent me an invite as well, and to go alone. Did he? Am I going to get killed? Maybe he's... Maybe he's... The, the Wolfpack right. member who delivered the message is like, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I remember when... I have been pretty lax with the quartermastering recently. When Queen Astoria was really mad at Guinevere, she would... You don't want to hear Guinevere's full name. Well, okay. That was big trouble. So, mate, but then he didn't look mad, though. He never looks mad. No, that's And it's true. hard to tell with his new beautiful peacock form. It is a beautiful peacock form. Can another wolf member say, why haven't you gone yet? No. As if I uh, pulled if, out if another... You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like... Uh, has anyone seen? Has anyone seen Quail? Has anyone seen Quail? He's, yeah. he's over here. He's in trouble with the captain. Yeah, he's right, too right. He's in trouble. He's asking where he is. He said that you sent a message. Oh, ages I should get ago. going. Okay. Do you want me to stand outside? Please. Yeah. If you hear anything. Okay. Okay. Bust Ooh, he, he said, "Come alone." All right. So oh, your choice. Okay. Can a third wolf? <laughs> Yeah, this time it's Faith, and Faith's just like, he really wants to see you really quickly. Okay, okay, okay. Can we travel down together? Yeah, I'll take you there, but... How I'm, angry I'm, does he look? I, I don't know, it's hard to tell. He's he's a bird he's now, beautiful. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Faith will take you up to the captain's quarters, but doesn't come in and just leaves you there. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Right, you have to roleplay with Trot now. <laughs> I just crack open a door, and you just see the peacock eye. Hi, Lucius. Kile. Why did... I... And then I disappear from the door, but the door opens. Should I come? Do you want me to... Quickly, okay. Quickly now. Okay. Door right. open or? I shut the door and I was behind the door. Uh, um. Take a seat, Kilek. <laughs> Is there a seat laid out for him? Yeah. Like a there's meeting. A seat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In front of like your desk, like with the captain's there's chair. There's also a little side table and a little teacup. Filled. Is is a teacup for me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Lucius is pacing back and forth. Um. I, I assume you know why. I brought uh, you here. I mean, uh, a couple of weeks ago there was that missing note in the quartermaster log, and I mean, I don't know you don't read those, but uh, maybe it's that. No, maybe it's no, no. no. Okay, uh, I mean, you, you were calling me Keelak. Did I say something wrong? Say Did something I... wrong? No. What do you mean? You, what? What's what's the Keelak? I don't want to be a bird anymore. Okay. And I don't know if that's offensive, and I'm sorry. It's no, it's well, I mean, we, we... There's nothing wrong with being a bird. I just want you to make that abundantly clear. Oh, I mean, I love being a bird. A birdie. I'm glad you do. And you know what? It's got its perks. It I does. did a little fly. You can, you can fly, and but there is however, the whole egg thing. There's <laughs> something about... Uh, I just want to be me again. The old me. So if I go back to that, you're not going to be offended, are you? Oh, Please don't be offended. I, no, I won't. I'm so sorry. Why did you ask me to come alone? How did because I couldn't say that in front of everybody. Why? I mean... What if you were offended? I'm not offended. I, 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 I couldn't quite... tell. I like... You're so hard to read. I, what is it about bird faces that makes them so You've hard to read? a storm eye. Oh, I mean, yeah, but I've still got, like, some kind of furrowed brow sometimes when I'm a little bit angry. Very difficult to tell. It's really hard to tell with you. That's why I was so concerned. Also, my vision has changed. So it has. It's, been hard to... it's wider, right? Uh, yes, I'm taking a lot more in. Hey, a bird perception. Pretty good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so... Can't see in the dark so well. No, it? no, you have to get used to that. But well, I, that's what I'm you got the hoping lights. not to. Oh, I'm yeah, hoping true, to yeah. go back. I, I mean, I think everyone would be happy to see uh, Lucius back. Not that you're not Lucius now. Yes, but I, I agree. Um, but... I, I also don't know how my sister would react. I mean, could we do that anyway, just to see? Maybe we could, we just, just before, yeah, just before. <laughs> That would be quite funny. Wait, but how are you going to 
Because, I mean, that was a, ri a wish ring. Oh, I, I don't know. And frankly, it's not on the priority list. I just thought on the travel back to Horizon, I discussed that ultimately I do want to return to elven form. Okay. And I mean, we can try and figure out a way. Um, oh, you're not offended. That's well, no, I, such a relief. I, it's, it's, uh, you made a... There's not many Arakokras around. I thought maybe it oh, would no, be nice for another birdie to be about. There's tons around when you go to the right places. Okay, yeah. There's not many the on this ship. There's not many on the ship, no. Or Horizon. It has been nice, I will say. It's, well, it's been nice. I can stick around while well, I don't have any method, so... <laughs> uh, well, yeah. make an Arcana check for me. Okay. Arcana, oh, eight, plus eight, 16. There's something like, it's just something, when, when Lucius is talking about not knowing how to go back and you're having this kind of back and forth conversation, there, there, there might be something that just twigs in your mind, saying, oh, he doesn't know how to go back, it was a wish. And then you remember in the forge, when Valena started to look weakened and it looked like things were going to go wrong and Valor used power, you remember she reversed part of the time in the room and like repositioned people and undid things. If Valor is gaining more mastery over that power, she might be able to revert Lucius's body back before he made the wish. And that might undo it. Oh, hang on, Lucius, my, my book is vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done this before. I, I'll, let me just get this really quick. Well, hang on. It was so awkward. Lucius, <laughs> you won't believe this. It's, your, it's supposed to be your knowledge of skill of magic. You're a cleric of magic. You're supposed to have knowledge of this stuff. The Wayfinder's guy can't vibrate no, it's with notifications. Like... <laughs> As the DM, I sometimes have to tell you stuff that your character knows. <laughs> What if we spoke with Vala? Oh, sorry, my... What's that? That's my arcane focus, so oh, I put right. it on silent. Put it on, yeah. We're trying to have a conversation here. Sorry about that. You're distracted. <laughs> oh, yes, please, thank you. Um, do you want me to feed it to you? <laughs> do you want have me to feed the tea to you as well? I'd, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm struggling with these. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, <laughs> we could talk to Vala. Um, and, uh, you know, she, she time stuff right in in, in Valina's in Valina's forge um and maybe shift you shift you right back i don't know if it will change your memories maybe that's asking a lot of valor you saw how tired she was after that's true that battle yeah but just for me to not be a birdie when we got such greater things at hand like getting people off warfronts and saving aroes yeah but whether uh, i'm a peacock or not that's what about your your confidence is it as high? Through now? the roof. Everyone was complimenting me after I transformed. Too high? Unbound. A little too much eyes on, if you okay, know what I mean. Yeah. I mean. And I don't mind it. It will affect you, though. Uh, what about the use of the wings during the combat? I've got a larger surface area. Okay. And I'm not used to feathers coming off of me all the time. And I might be allergic to feathers. <laughs> Even now? Yes, I'm a bit bunged up. I don't know if you could tell. See all that gunky stuff around his peacock eyes. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, skin. <laughs> that's not a good thing to be allergic to. Well, yes, I was trying to, hoping that I'd just... Open. Wait, is that something that's developed since you changed? I've only noticed it more, because I am surrounded... You've been with... allergic to feathers this entire time? I don't know. It's a... I'm just making connections here, that's all. Well, it's a revelation. It's just, Kim or Ree, if you guys want to do any work, then just feel free to fucking shut these guys up. <laughs> or we're going to have a fucking hour of the Tom and Trot comedy show. I was just thinking about what dinner I was going to have. It's fine. <laughs> I was that. making a shopping list in my head. <laughs> I, I think if, if, it's, if it's what you want to be and it will make you you, then I don't think it's a waste of resources or time or energy if that's what you want to be. That's extremely reassuring. Thank you, Kilek. Can you quill? Birdie. I was trying to be formal about the whole thing. It was scary. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Birdie works. Thank you, Birdie. There you go. Appreciate it. And, um, you know, if I could switch between Peacock and Elf at will, I'd absolutely do it. I mean, Benefits to both. You could find a way to do that, too. There, well, there, there is definitely spells that can do that. What would I look like as an elf? What, what do you think? I've never thought about that before. Do you have ninth level spell slots? I do. Yeah, you would know that there's magic, that things like shape change, true polymorph, many things that can change a person's shape. 
and, and, and being. Oh, I cast my ninth level spell. <laughs> we haven't had I don't know if you have access to them, but like you would know that other spellcasters can use them and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, you could just shift back whenever you want. I mean, I, well, I can do what the ring did as well. Really? Mm. However, I feel like the usage of that is trivial into in, by comparison as to what it could be used for. Yeah, and it, it, in game knowledge, Lucius would know that there is a risk whenever he uses that spell. If he tries to do anything too much with it, there's a chance it won't ever work again. Like, you, in character, you know that that is a consequence of using that spell. You can't play around with wishes. <clears throat> Sometimes they go very, very wrong. Yeah, they do, they do. But not in this case, obviously. I'm no, in this case, saying this, yeah, this is great, great. Really, really good, yeah. Very good. Love it. Anyway. <laughs> right, little, thank you. With that, <laughs> with that last, um, yeah, uh, unless there's anything else going on the ship. Hey, Sentry. Hey, Sentry. Well, this is going on. Have you ever been to a music concert? We have a lot of them in Vortensar. Oh, Jesus Christ. <gasps> no, I haven't. Yeah, you do have a lot of them in Vortensar right now. Uh, <laughs> so. What are they like? They're amazing. Here's some music I think you like. <laughs> what is that on? What's that on? Just, so she just passes just a her a rock. It's a rock. <laughs> it's a fucking it's a rock. rock that's imbued with magic. No, it's, it's just a rock. <laughs> it's just Nova's gone insane. It's a seashell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you wear a pair of the Mophie <laughs> <laughs> the band. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, I get it. We really <laughs> like the concert. We had the first time. I know you did. I feel younger and so energetic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So glad we had a good episode last week. <laughs> this is gold. Well, yeah. When you leave, uh -huh. it seems like everyone's treating this very seriously. Can you storm out and look like you're really upset? Well, do you want to make it look like you really shouted at me and that you're a fearful yes. presence as a captain? Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Okay. Um, okay. I think Ready? yeah, I can do. Yeah. Okay. Three, right. two. One. Performance check. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Captain Lucius. I'm outside the room. You were both yeah. powerful and fair. <laughs> I'm standing Nova's outside. Nova's there as well, because you've been talking about yeah. music concerts, apparently. Well, it's yep. known for its music theme. All right. Um, yeah, I... I, I um, Total? Performance check? It's a 19. 19. If either of you have a, a passive insight of less than 19, <laughs> you yep. believe this. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Captain Lucius. I'm, I won't do it again. Uh, you are you are powerful and fair in, in your assessment as me. Just get out. Okay. I slam the door. Um, uh, I don't want to talk know. about it. What, what, happened? what happened? What did, what did you do? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I do know. He he described it in full detail. I know exactly what I did wrong, and I will not make this mistake again. He was very eloquent and kind and fair. A few Wolfpack members are like, looking like impressed faces. Like, oh, damn. Cool got chewed out. A true captain. I'll salute the door. Are you crying? <laughs> are you crying, Quill? Quill! <laughs> Listen to this music. It will cheer you up. <laughs> when I was. <laughs> A young elf. Ah. Uh, Amazing. Well, the Storm Chaser arrives back in Horizon. Um, as I said, no no situations on the way. Um, you dock. You are met by guards. Um, you can go to the Citadel of the Re of the Reborn if you wish. Do whatever you want. I'm gonna go smooch my girlfriend. Yeah, you can do that. Do you want That's us fun. to wait for you? Mm hmm Or should we go speak to Danica? Let's go speak to Danica. I'll smooch her later. Okay, My girlfriend, sure? not Danica. No, I mean, you can go do that while we speak to Danica if you like. I'm going to go smooch my girlfriend. Yeah, you do that, and we'll okay. meet you at the middle. I've got some music uh, to share with her. It's a rock. <laughs> it's literally a rock. Hold never. it to your ear. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Anyway. <laughs> Episode title. Told Santa, I told, told Santa there wasn't going to be any combat this uh, this event. I might just. It's <laughs> a oh, huge so rock. Here is here. Eat your swarm uh, twice. Straight on Nova. Pass it three times per round. No. Um, right. So Nova is going to go smooch Thalia. Mm -hmm. Right. The rest of you are going to go to the Citadel of Reborn with Ayla and find Danica, basically. Right. And then yeah. get all the updates and stuff. All right. Well, Kim. You've just written yourself out of loads of cool RP, so That's have fun. Fine. No, it's fine. I need a um, pee break. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna, we're going to get that in 20 minutes, okay. so just wait. Uh, well, we said hi. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Uh, she won't yes. get a word in. <laughs> you can find uh, 
the Twin Star, you find Thalia, no problem. The rest of you, when you arrive at Citadel of Reborn, you're let in. Um, and yeah, you quickly find uh, Rain, who is just like, ah, champions, excellent, you're here. Uh, we do have some news and updates uh, for you that we've received. We've received some sending spells, uh, giving us some updates. Uh, is it just the, the four of you? Is Nova not joining us? She will be. She ah. might be a bit late. All right. Very well. Uh, well, if you'll come with me, uh, Danica wants to speak with you uh, we, uh, regarding all of this information that we've got. We also have a ton of information. Excellent. Let's, in response. Let's, let's, get, let's get everyone oh, gosh, together. I, I, I will summon the Grand Strategist. I will summon <laughs> Faelissa. Uh, we'll get everyone there together. All right? Excellent. All right. Uh, yeah, and Are you, you sure you don't want to be there? Like, yeah, I probably should be there for this, shouldn't I? <laughs> I was just like... Okay, yes, you can do whatever you want, but like you were all like beforehand, like, let's go and give like all this big important information to I like mean, the team. We can have a smooch break. Can I bring Thalia? <laughs> yeah, of course you can. I'm yeah. gonna dimension door to Thalia <laughs> and then You can't dimension door across the city, but yes. I can! You can't. It's teleport, it's a different Wait. spell. you you just get loads of messages from Quill's like, well, you should probably be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's important. like sending spell like, well, you should probably so, be. I'll, I'll teleport there with Thalia. We'll teleport in. Sorry to interrupt, but um <laughs> <laughs> Don't respond. <laughs> Don't respond. Oh, I can hear it all. <laughs> yeah. uh, so yes, Nova can join you. It takes some time for like ev all, everyone to be assembled, but you will all gather in the war room of Horizon. Uh, Danica, uh, Grand Strategist, uh, uh, Azaria Perel, uh, Phaelissa, the Dragon General uh, from from the Dragonborn and the Dragons, um, uh, Rain, and uh, not. There's a couple of other guests as well. There is a pair of Guardians. Um, and there is a high elf you don't recognize. Uh, sorry, not high elf, a wild elf. Um, dressed all in sort of furs and arctic looking clothing. Um, rugged looking male warrior wild elf. Um, hmm. Doesn't look like anybody you've recognized before, but uh, they're, they're waiting there as well. Um, and Danica will sort of say, ah, excellent, everyone is here. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad you could, uh, you could make it, Nova. Um, and the rest of you as well, thank you. Um, my Rain has told me that you have some information, and I've received word from Valor, which I feel you should come from you. She's given me the details, but I feel like you should explain it to myself and everyone else. But um, who would you like to go first with your updates before we move on to the information we have? Yes, sure. Um, a <laughs> lot going, has happened. Everyone's sort of like realized at this point, like everyone's like, who's that other bird? And then when you start to speak, everybody realizes it's Lucius. Like, there's a lot of like, Oh, mm-hmm. And Danica's like, uh, yes. Yes, a lot has happened. Um, mm. First and foremost, <laughs> I want to make it abundantly clear um, that there's now a, a ginormous ship en route um, to... Actually, no, it's not moving. It's not moving. Allied ship. It's an allied ship um, of an incredible display of turrets and defences. I know for you, got. Um, we have worked with the Forge, Mistress... Velena. Velena. And we have completed her project, one of which is the Astoria. And the Astoria is this incredible vessel that can take to astral space and help defend Erois. It's a couple of things. Um, sort of murmurs amongst the sort of gathered uh, things. Azaria. Very normally, very calm, collected. Like wears this veil. You almost never see facial expressions from her. Keeps very calm and collected. The description of the Astoria, this astral vessel, enormous Solvin-based ship. Her eyes are like wide, and from underneath the veil, you can see like a trembling sort of lip um, as she's listening to this description of it. Like you, you Quill and a bunch of the others pick up on that kind of thing. Danica will say, "This is." Better than anything we could have hoped for from the these encounters with the Titans. I'm relieved to hear that Velena uh, was still with us enough that she could provide these gifts. Valor has spoken of the other gift a little to me directly. I don't feel it is... We trust this council, but I feel that that perhaps is best left for closed discussions. Yes, I purposefully left that yes. um, to uh, other matters. Yes. Um, because we don't want that ultimately to happen, we want to defend Aroas and let's focus on the Astoria and fighting back. Indeed. You see uh, Phaelissa the Dragon is like, I'm not sure about this. Please, General, you have trusted us this far. I trust the champions and I trust our gods. And she's like, hmm. She kind of like sits back down and sort of grumbles about it. Um, but yes, I agree, Lucius, and I think that this is a very wise decision. With the Astoria, this provides us a real chance here. Um, there are some in the, the, 
it is difficult. Rain, perhaps we should brief them about what is happening with Valkyrian forces. Yes, uh, we, we mentioned it last time we spoke. The Valkyrian forces across Uroas have withdrawn. They, they have not retreated, but they have taken hold of their defensive positions in, in places where they are, they are stationed, Giselle and, and Zephena and a few others. Um, but they are not, they are staying there. They are not trying to take anything. They're not trying to take ground. Their efforts to reach out to smaller settlements have ceased. They have almost entirely just stopped any sort of advance or any sort of um, action against us as an alliance. Uh, they are not giving us any ground. We spoke of this last time. We're not sure if they are waiting for something, uh, some grand strategy or move. Uh, the grand strategist believes that is possible. Uh, he also believes it's possible that your mentioning of, of this civil conflict between Zarkira and Callus may also be causing him to pause his actions here on, on Erois. But we have seen no further movement. Should we mention the Starbane thing? Oh, we kind of maybe almost broke his brain. Uh, Nova that... Vija to the stage. Hi. Please, tell us more. Well, I know that we did briefly speak of something similar, but you did not quite explain it as you nearly broke his brain. I mean, yeah. Brain, heart, all that. Um, so when we last encountered uh, Starbane, uh, Ayla found a way to project to him uh, what Quill saw um, about how Hadar was going to eat the world engine and get even bigger and destroy the universe. Um, so we, we showed that directly to Starbane. We also perhaps learned a bit more about Starbane's personal relationship with Siaska. Um, and he shouted at us and disappeared. But I don't see how this would change anything. You had already told him of this vision and he did not believe you. Would he not just assume the same thing about witnessing it? Why would that change his mind now? Because he saw it. He was in it. But he experienced it. Callus is wise enough in magic that it is... It, he could know... That one can project images into another's mind. That is not... Maybe it was the feeling and the emotion that went with it. Possibly. There I just something there that, that really affected him. I mean, very much, clearly. Uh, the Grand Stretches is uh, sort of speaks up, if, if I may. <laughs> even if... This, even if Valkyrian uh, has has had a sort of change of heart, he would have had to have ordered his forces to to stop sort of any sort of progress. Why not withdraw them entirely? If he's convinced by this vision of yours, why not have them withdraw entirely? I, I'm not sure if that is the whole answer. The he may not be answer. fully convinced, which is why he's not made a decision yet. That may be the case. That may be the case. Uh, I think we need to find out. Yes, I, I think that that uh, information is key in these sort of engagements. The more we know of his motives, we've been acting under the auspice, under the, the strategy that his motive is a conquest or uh, destruction. Uh, that he will, this, is, this must be a victory for him, no matter the cost, that he would take yes. this world engine. And I firmly believe we do not drop our defenses. Of course, no, I agree. Um, but if there is a chance that... Uh, if if he is reconsidering this plan, then that must be. We must investigate that further. If there is the potential that there, at least to rule it out. If 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 we if it is the case of what Lady Danica believes, and that this vision has not convinced him any further, we must find out why his forces have stalled in this manner. Perhaps it is this this Zarkira. Maybe his forces are being stressed or, or I tested. Think there's elsewhere. an inner conflict among their forces mm. between Zarkira and Starbane. And I think that's coming to a head. Mm. It could be that. It could be that he simply cannot commit more forces at this time, so he has paused his his advance. We've mentioned this previously before. I, I still believe that our best option is to deal with these other problems, these titans that are causing issues across Aroes, to gather allies and gather strength. And now we have this battleship. We are we are a step ahead. We have gained a great asset uh, that we can use. Ooh, uh, on that note, yeah. can't quite use it just yet. <clears throat> Please, um, explain. We need a crew. It, it mm. has power, it has a basic crew at the moment, but we need an actual trained crew that can, well, we need a bridge crew um, of experts in various fields to lead a crew that crews the, the streets and the mm. turrets and the very nature of the Astoria itself. Um, mm. It is just technology mm. provided to Aroas. We need to utilize it. 
for the first time, Azira speaks up. If it is the magic of Solvin, this will be a, one of the greatest discoveries, one of the most powerful relics that we have here on the planet. Solvin's mastery of magic was was beyond anything that we have today. And if they have created, if, if this Astoria is capable of astral travel without uh, uh, an elemental or a, a magical engine, that is something worth investigating. We must protect it at all costs. Uh, it is it is one of the greatest uh, discoveries. We must protect it. Um, Danica will turn around and say, well, there may be some good news on that front with regards to a crew. A term, in terms of a crew of experts, I personally vote that the champions of Rois decide whom that should be. Oh, I do not believe that anyone in this room, and she glances at the Grand Strategist and the General Felissa and Azaria, are in a place to make that decision. General, you have a great military mind, but your interests are firmly with the Dragonborn and your vengeance against Callus. Uh, Grand Strategist, you are a great military mind and a, and a great uh, logistical advisor, but you do not know hearts and minds. Um, as for myself, I must look after Horizon. That is my chief concern. I feel that champions, you should pick who that should be. Uh, pick the bridge crew or perhaps even a single individual who can decide it. Uh, that should be down to you. In terms of a crew for protecting the, the ship itself and manning its various services, we have some good news on that regard. Um, your recent efforts to with the, the Forge and with uh, Valena, um, we received word from Duke Sovrano and Baroness Coral Song that the natural disasters in the Hawkstone Archipelago have ceased. Uh, things have returned to normal. Um, many lives have been saved. And in thanks, they have formally joined our alliance and they have offered oh. uh, vast amounts of resources. Duke Sovrano has sent uh, fleets of sailing ships as well as experienced swashbucklers and pirates, that sort of thing, um, who could potentially be uh, a good crew for fighting aboard a giant vessel. Um, Less useful for the Astoria, the Tritons have sent uh, beast riders, uh, people that can fight in the sea and, and uh, sail around, um, as well as warriors. Uh, and Baroness Coruscant herself is joining us to help marshal and train our troops. Um, she is uh, a skilled enough fighter, uh, but that may be, that is that has increased our numbers significantly. We have added two very powerful forces. Uh, Duke Sovrano is also a very financially skilled individual and is going to help us manage resources and acquisitions and things like that as well uh, and transporting resources and supplies so we do have at least two new allies um there are several other things as well um your guardians uh sentinel prime um they are here in Horizon. We have sent out your scouts. We have two with us who can update us more on uh, the matter you asked them to investigate. But your guardians are... We do not have a battlefield for them to fight upon at this moment. We we were using them when Valkyrian's forces were actively engaging us. Without these military engagements, the guardians do not have much of a purpose. I fear that solving this Astoria would be a perfect place to dispatch them and have them protect it, at least, until we decide what else is to be done with it. Yeah, of course. Um, if that is your will, I, these are your people. I would not choose to th uh, not decide anything for them, but... I'd be happy for them to be on the Astoria. Well, they are not doing anything here. I think that we should put them to use in protecting the ship, at least. Um, we were hoping that um, this crew that we're going to assemble mm. would be a representation of as much of us as we can. We can certainly take people from various elements and aspects, but we are still to win over other parts of the world. Uh, but but to now, hear the... The Tritons mm -hmm. are helping, and Guardians, that's two already. It's the people of the Hawkstone Archipelago, you already have the alliance of both Gusthaven and Horizon. We can send some of our forces there as well. We can you know, issue a small number of troops. Uh, Gusthaven has definitely more skilled uh, Griffin riders who could be useful in aerial battles. Um, uh, we have a few engineers, but... Uh, I think that we could easily convince the people of Goldthrone. The Dwarves are great structural engineers. Mm. I yes, think it, we have a contact. Good. Well, Arvel. Good. You know him. I think now, if this is the case, Guardians are excellent soldiers, and we know that they have many craftsmen amongst their number. The people of Hawkstorn Archipelago are skilled uh, combatants aboard ships. Uh, it could be that even perhaps we could, if we could get some ships from Gusthaven, some airships, we could have them crewed by the people of, uh, of Hawkstorn Archipelago, and those could be uh, part of the fleet within the Astoria. I'm told it can hold airships, yes. Mm -hmm. That would give us forces. Uh, we need gunners. Unfortunately, 
It is not a particular skill. We are not renowned for our marksmen in the Sky Cities or in any of these places. That may be something that if you can find any individuals who are skilled or skilled with magic, uh, arcane turrets and, and similar seem to be of a, a similar nature, um, but also officers to lead them. Uh, this bridge crew, this this command structure. Yes, Sorry, I just got a idea of recruiting a load of spell clash warriors and fighters. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say that in character? They're spell clash. They are. They're skilled with magic and aiming and. A lot of people dexterity. kind of like scoff at the idea, but the grand strategist is like, no, no. That is an excellent suggestion, Killer Kedkala. They are powerful mages. They are used to combat and battle against others. The my understanding they have is a ranking. The sport has ceased. We know Some the of them is. are unreliable, but it was popular enough. I mean, we I don't could know assemble how much of it is theatrics, uh, but even theatrics it felt can, real when I was there. Even theatrics can have a skill in battle distractions. People that can make it seem that there are a hundred warriors instead of only a few. That is not a bad suggestion. I don't think that they could provide a large force, but a force of 20, 30 spell clash experienced mages, that could be a useful unit to bring with us. Nice. Mm. Nice. Uh, I was thinking fey creatures, so there's probably a better one. <laughs> yeah, Rose is, Meadow at the helm. Yeah, that's true. That's probably a better suggestion. That to be is possible. This is not exclusive. We can have both ideas. This is a large ship, to my understanding. We will need many warriors from many different True. places. Um, the Feywild, the, the planet. powerful magics in the Fey. Oh, that's certainly again. yes. <laughs> certainly yes. Uh, we need hope on our vessel, anyway. We do. Maybe that if once we have dealt with a Telecus, the clans of the Beast Folk, they are renowned to have good archers and marksmen amongst their number. Could be that we could recruit some of their to them, them to aid us, but we would need to deal with the Artelicus first. My understanding is that their people are deep within that conflict. Uh, <sighs> yes, let uh, Danica is like. Let us take a short break. We do have two uh, others, uh, two groups. Uh, we have updates regarding both Artelicus, the Titan, and Kilara as well. What we discussed previously. Wonderful. Um, we should discuss that when you return. But yes, there is much to think about here. Uh, we also, Nova Vija, I believe that we have some information regarding Vortensar as well. For you. Oh, good. I was going to ask, you know, if anyone has any word from my idiot brother. Uh, directed via perhaps Norfair, but Norfair, our agent, has contacted us with information. Still live? That's my nanny. My understanding, yes. But uh, we do have some, some updates. Um, yes. Very well. Well, let's just take a short break and we will reconvene. Okay, and I'm back. <laughs> We're going to end part one. Yay. We'll see you in just a second. Nice. See you soon. Bye. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of High Rollers, uh, Rois. Last time, our players have. You know, now that they've uh, got the Astoria, they have traveled to Horizon. Conversations have been had, and they are currently getting updates from the various kind of advisors and allies that they've made along the way. Um, and now that's for Rihanna, and she lost it. Uh, <laughs> now And now they're basically getting updates on everything, and they're also exchanging information, talking about the Astoria, figuring out who's going to go where, um, and everything else. Yeah. Uh, as we jump back into this meeting, uh, Danik will say, so, uh, now that we've had our short break, um, there are three pieces of news. Uh, we have information about Kalara, we have information about Atelicus, and we have information regarding Vortensar. Which would you prefer to hear first? I look at Nova. Stupid brother. As I mentioned, uh, I don't know how... Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything specific to your brother Tornado, is it? Um, but Norfair has given us uh, some information about Vortensar. Whilst the Valkyrian forces across Eroes have moved into this withholding pattern, um, the exception seems to be Vortensar. Oh, good. Um, it seems to almost be acting, not independently, but as if nothing has changed. Um, several members of the Ganassi Council have been removed from office. Apparently there have been accusations of various crimes, including treason, sabotage, and plots to assassinate a dignitary of the Empire. Uh, Harmony, uh, who I believe, Nova, please correct me if I'm incorrect, but Harmony is the sort of um, head of this council, the leader of, of, uh, of, of Vortensar, uh, and Shansara, uh, some sort of 
officer of the Valkyrian army, but some sort of musician. Um, they have considerable control and influence in the city. Shansara's popularity in particular is becoming very cult-like. Uh, her concerts and fans treat her as a living saint, and she's referred to as the guiding light uh, and the one responsible for helping the Ganassi come home, uh, which has given her a very high status amongst their, amongst the culture there. Um, the Seekers, who we believe to be uh, an organization of youths who were helping Norfear and were sort of rebelling against this decision, um, they are no longer being treated as sort of uh, dissident youths. They are now being fully labeled as criminals, uh, violent activists. Um, they, uh, they are working to try and prevent Valkyrian forces from doing what they are, but it is difficult. Uh, they, they are a small number against a city that is allied against them. Um, finally, we believe that they are still continuing their work to build transportation devices which will transport the city. We don't have a clear time frame of when that will be completed, but it, it is progressing. Um, that is what we have so far. Norfair, it is harder and harder. Norfair is struggling to get communication out to us uh, as we are going about this discussion. The city is definitely becoming more locked down as time goes on. So... Is there anything we can do to aid Vortensar? I... I'm not sure if there is. Uh, we are, we've sent our agents in to, uh, without an outright sort of attacking it, I'm not sure that there is much more we can do. And even then, I, there is a moral part of me which is struggling to, would struggle to justify such an action. Uh, from what I understand from Norfis reports and your own, the people of your city did vote for this. They chose this because they want to return to their home world, this plane that they Ganassi come from. They are not from Erois. There I, are other ways to do it, though, not teleport the entire city. I feel that then it becomes a question of do we attack them to prevent this method that may very well work and take them to their home? Or Can we not sabotage the teleportation that, that is what it? That is what they're trying to do. That is what Norfear and our forces and the, the Seekers are trying to do. We, we've dispatched as many espionage agents as we have, but Horizon is... is we have soldiers. They are not suited for that line of work. Um, they really had to go the music route, didn't they? They really had to... I I, I don't know. If that is a, a big part of your culture, I imagine, that, I imagine that Valkyrian is intelligent enough to have figured that out and sent a, a likely emissary. I, I am... This Shansara, uh, it is... It is fanatical from the reports that we've received. It, it, we've the, met her before. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. Yeah. You've encountered her. Well, from the report, she's grown stronger. Um, oh, good. Uh, she is, if you met her, I imagine that she is a, 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 an influential source. And Elantrin alone has quite powerful, charming abilities, but she combines this with magic and, and performance and, and now has this ve very zealot, uh, zealous following uh, that serve her. I just, I, I can't help but feel that Harmony must be under some sort of influence or... Could very well be. Because they are meant, by their very men nature, they are a Gnasty born of all elements, mm. all four elements. That's why they rule the council, because they are meant to be Harmony. They are meant to be the best of all of us. I cannot speak to your culture. I, I'm sorry, Nova. I, I only have what Norfair has told me. Uh, from the from the reports of it, I mean, Norfair has attempted to glean if there is a spell in effect, but she is not a mage. She's not been able to discover anything. Um, Shansara and Harmony seem to be working together closely for the city. Their conditions aren't bad there, apart from the the seekers, the treatment of the seekers who are committing crimes. They are they are breaking property. They are causing sabotage, breaking where they going where they should not. They are acting illegally, but um, it is difficult. It is a difficult scenario. It's just hard for me to believe that Harmony would make this solitary decision for everyone. Their very nature, they would allow people to leave if they choose to stay in Aroas. It seems to be that they are the one who uh, has, has had several members of the council removed as well. They are the one who, who has decreed them as treasonous and, and had them removed. I, I suspect that there will be foul play involved, but we do not have confirmation. Um, as with many other things, a, a problem, um, but there are many, and we must decide which ones we deal with in what time that mm -hmm. we have. Um, Where did you get that uh, music rock, Nova? Was that Shansara? 
No, it's another band, actually, from Vortensar, who are all the rage. Oh. My alchemical romance. <laughs> Your al your alchemical romance. I, I just did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's the DM. Your al your alchemical romance, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that is that is all the information I have on Vort and Sar. We do have uh, Kalara Kal and Atelicus. We both have two visitors who can brief you on those. Please, um, I say Kalara last. Very well. It's more than likely we're going to pursue that if, first. If we are agreed? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, Hunter Varnir, was it? Uh, would you please come and speak with the champions? And uh, you see the wild elf who's kind of dressed in these blue and white furs. Um, like, almost kind of like that mixture of like very arctic, kind of somebody who lives out in the deep, deep snow, but elements of like Celtic and Viking dress as well. You see t uh, like a blue and white tartan, sort of like bandolier across their chest, but then a thick, heavy fur hood and like big th kind of thick mittens. Um, they almost have one of those snow goggles as well, like perched up on their head. Um, and then the pointed wild elf is. Uh, and he sort of approaches and kind of looks around. Very grisly, kind of mountain man looking, big thick beard, like Viking beard. And he's like, Argh. So, you're the ones Mogreen spoke of. And he looks at Ayla, you. I've heard of you, one of her chosen. My name is Hunter Varnir. I'm with uh, the Wild Elves of Al Saraf. I've come to tell you about the great beasts. I'm told you know of them. Oh, we, we, we do, yes. Uh, uh, the beast of sky, land, and sea? Aye. They've been given names now. Oh. Stone Maw, the giant beast, the lizard that walks. Stone Maw, okay. Storm Wing. Storm Wing? Aye, the bird. Yeah. Okay, write that down. Storm Wing. Tide Hydra. Tide Hydra. That's a good one. That's very good. One that dwells in the ocean. They're names that we've given them just to make it easier for communication. Um, They've become difficult. Me and my people, we've been hunting them, trying to, well, we can't kill them, but we've been trying to corral them, trying to guide them, distract them where we can. It worked for a while, but they're learning and adapting. <laughs> they begun attacking settlements and ships, just little ones for now, but we think that they're learning how to destroy, how to hunt, they're getting instructions from Atelicus, from what the druids speak. They say that uh, he's communicating with them, telling them what to do, teaching them. They're also, what was the word that they used? Mutating. Oh. They've grown features. Stone Maw, the one I'm most familiar with. Ah, its body is covered in this runic bark. It's impossibly tough. Ah, Weapons, spells, don't seem to hit it or struggle to do anything when it does. Their endurance is astounding. We believe there might be some sort of method or trick to disabling them or, or striking them where they're weak, but we haven't found it yet. Uh, we decided to come and tell you that uh, if it goes on much longer, they're going to only keep getting stronger and deadlier. Okay, mutating. Write that down. Mutating. Um, okay. How do these names? Um, are they uh, the, the, the Tide Hydra, for example? Aye. Does it possess similar qualities to that of a Hydra? Aye, that's why we called it that. All right. Okay. Just... It's water Hydra. It's basically it's a Hydra. It's massive. And it lives in the sea. And it has multiple heads. It's a very apt name. Okay. Yeah. I was just making sure. How how many heads? Uh, it's not one I'm familiar with. Some of the other wild elves have been chasing those. We, oh, we all have different skills. I'm more of a, a hunter in woods and, and mountains, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm most familiar with Stonemore and Stormwing, but uh, uh, I can't see how many heads that has. But uh, aye, it's, it's, I've been told, I've been sent to come and tell you. Uh, we have established a base of operations in the mountains north of Al-Saraf. Uh, in the centre of the continent. It gives us easy access to the coast, to the mountain ranges where you can spy Stormwing and then also the the Arctic forests in the land and the, the pine forests of the where Stonemore hunts. Um, we're working to try and figure out how we can beat them. Uh, that's our main goal now. We're losing a lot of hunters doing it, uh, but we're making progress. But 
but uh, if they get stronger, it's going to become harder and harder. Right. Is there any indication of the beasts working together in any way? Not so far, not yet. They stay to their respective realms, if you want to think of it. Um, but if they were to attack together, it would be very difficult to defeat them. Do they, do they sleep? Do they, they rest? Uh, yeah, they sleep. Uh, not much, but enough. Uh, it gives us moments to re rest and recuperate. Mm. Uh, at first, we began trying things like drugging food to try and see if we could get them to rest or slumber or poison them. And it sort of worked. It bought us time, but it's becoming less and less effective. We now think that they're, they're at least resistant, perhaps even completely immune to the toxins' effects. Uh, it seems that whatever we do, they eventually adapt to it and it no longer becomes effective. So we've tried injuring them, they grew this armor. Uh, we try and poison them, no longer affects them. They don't sleep very much. They're growing smarter as well. Uh, they hunt with more tactics. Uh, hmm. Not much, but I was told to come and tell you this anyway. Mograine sends her regards, and she says that she'll welcome you to the camp when you arrive. Uh, and she'll make sure that you've got the equipment and the knowledge necessary to help us hunt these beasts. But she doesn't think that uh, she doesn't think that regular steel, even uh, the few relics that we carry with us, they seem to do very little. Right. You need a storm hammer. Aye, or whatever the lot you do. I don't know. I'm told that you're champions, that you're <laughs> great warriors and druids or spellcasters of some kind. I'm mm -hmm. told. Yeah. Um, well, we can thank you for the information. Uh, I'm sure that when we do uh, strike back at the beast, we can respond with uh, something more varied and uh, attempt something new that they won't be able to predict. Right. Well, I'm told that you, bird. Well, there's two birds. Hang on, which one? Oh, I'm the. <coughs> I'm probably that the bird one? you know of. Yeah. Oh. I'm told that you have the power. You can see things that don't exist. Yes. Uh, Mograine said that ask the, the ask the one who can see. Um, if his eye can answer any questions. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, at least to consider it or something. I don't know. I definitely will. Um, though I'm wary of asking now, uh, I don't want to have them mutate again and right. protect against that attack. All right. Um, yeah. But I will. I will definitely use okay. the eye. Well, the Hunter's Guild will welcome you when you arrive. I'm Thank done. Thank you. Please hold strong and uh, we'll, we'll try and assist as soon as we can. Good. Did you legit just say, I'm done? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you for your time. Um, uh, he just grunts and leaves. He's done. Best of luck. OK, bye. He said, I'm done, not I'm dumb. No, no, not dumb. Yeah. No, I heard yeah, I'm yeah, done. Okay, it was good, just yeah. like, oh, wow, yeah, no, OK. He's, he's like, I'm done. And he's he's yeah. off. Yeah, he's yeah, delivered like, his yeah. message. Yeah, all right. uh, <laughs> and it looks like he's quite keen to get back <laughs> to this hunt. <laughs> he's, he's... <laughs> I'm dumb. I didn't even hear that. <laughs> no, I, I'm dumb. I, I just <laughs> thought that that's why you were laughing. <laughs> I was like, do you think he said I'm dumb? That's the weirdest um, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, Hunter Vanir will head back. And uh, cool. you know, if you need answers, if you want to like sending spell, he is a contact you can use to ask about the great beasts the yeah three beasts the three oh, great yeah. beasts in fact um, evolving oh man uh so uh for tom's benefit by the way uh monster hunter. you've been playing a lot of monster hunter yeah i know i've been noticing when you said oh, the hunters <laughs> killed are we waiting for you you fucking bet they will <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hell yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that can give you a little hint into how the mechanics are going to spend three work. turns sharpening my weapons. <laughs> <laughs> little bright fella. Uh, yeah. Is there little cats? Cats? So little cats? Cats? Yeah, uh, a little cat crater. So little cat crater. Maybe. Uh, so with uh, Varnir leaving, uh, Danica will now call over the other two uh, for the last sort of update, and it is two guardian scouts. Um, hmm. You don't recognize these guys before. I mean, you would have seen them very briefly, but they're not like named guardians you guys have met before. Um, but if they had a name. Uh, well, they're going to introduce themselves. Okay, good. Uh, so uh, Danica will bring them forward. She doesn't call them by their name. She just says, "Ah, oh, guardians, please come forward." Um, and the first one you see definitely strikes you as a bit weird because it almost looks like he, he or she, has like a little antenna that like forks coming out of the forehead, like a little sort of like forked, twinned antenna that sticks mm -hmm. out their forehead. Very lithe, very much built for stealth and agility. Um, uh, kind of stone plates, much more organic parts to them, um, and a few stone plates, but mostly organic, uh, very lithe, very natural. Uh, you can see that they carry uh, a quarter staff as their weapon that's like slung on their back. Uh, the other one with them um, uh, looks much more 
mage-like. Uh, they are wearing robes, um, almost like, but they're coloured in the same tones as their armour and their cloths. It almost looks like these robes are part of them. They've been designed to look like vines and, and oh. leaves, kind of. But it's almost like a wizard's kind of like cloak or, or jacket kind of flying off them. And they are carrying a large metal staff engraved with loads of runes. Um, the, the one with the staff has six eyes um, <laughs> and sort of like dot, 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 sort of like down the middle of their face and then just a thin line for a mouth. Um, and uh, they are the one who speak first, and they say, "Ah, champions of Aruis, Sentinel Prime." And it, they bow deeply to Sentinel Prime. Uh, uh, I am Stave of our Mages uh, unit, of our Magicians unit, and this is Scout Dowser of the Scouting unit. Um, and Dowser is the one with the little sort of forehead, which now you see is a dowsing rod. Mm. Um, and they sort of bow deeply, and they're like, a "Pleasure to meet you." Um, Sentinel Prime, and they seem to be a bit more sort of like nervous, and Stave is like, we have come on behalf of Scout Commander Hotshot, uh, who has sent us to deliver a report on the Order of the Blackened Rose. Um, are you prepared to receive this report? Oh, yes. Very well, I will begin. Uh, may I use magic in this chamber? Uh, what kind of magic? Uh, it will be a simple illusion to illuminate, uh, to project a map of the area oh, that we yes. scouted. Absolutely. Ah, thank you. Uh, he sort of looks around. Uh, he waves his hand, uh, waves their hand, and um, they project a map of a very dense jungle valley onto the middle of the war table. Um, and they sort of project this illusion, um, and, uh, st and uh, Dowser will actually kind of say, we traveled to northern Jakesh, uh, where we believed that there was some information that this, this place may be, um, and we believe we have located um, Nightbloom Hold, uh, which is the, the sort of base of operations for these, these knights, these grief knights, or the, the Order of the Black and Rose. Um, Stave will, will indicate where uh, it roughly is, and you see that the jungle sort of valley becomes this much narrower where it kind of like changes the illusion. Like ping the place first, then zoom in. <laughs> and it kind of like displays it basically. Yeah, very much like that with illusion magic. Um, very realistic, like almost perfectly sculpted, like a little miniature diorama on the table rather than like a magical map. It almost looks real. Mm -hmm. um, and you see this very deep cut valley with a river sort of flowing nearby it, but it's incredibly dense jungle. Like the canopy covers it entirely. And it actually, the, the illusion goes under the canopy into a very darkened, sort of like very overgrown, natural, hilly valley that runs through it. Kind of imagine the Amazon, but kind of combined with like the Scottish Highlands with these deep craggy kind of like depths and things like that. Uh, Dowser will say, um, we've located uh, the Nightbloom hold here, um, uh, but there's a, a, a lot of details. Uh, we believe that there are a few knights um, based in, in the hold, along with a celestial being. Uh, one of our trackers has the ability to sense the presence of these creatures um, and, and believes that there is a celestial at the uh, within the abbey itself. Uh, we believe that the, the celestial might be their commander or, or they're sort of in charge of what's happening. Um, uh, the jungle itself makes uh, approach by airship nearly impossible, but we have created a forward operating base here the illusion shapes again, and you see a clearing sort of open up uh, that uh, C Commander Hotshot is, is currently operating from. We believe that from an airship, you would be able to airdrop uh, with magic um, into the into that space. Um, but there's no place for an airship to land nearby, and, and uh, the nature of the land there is very uh, rocky and steep. It, it's very difficult to move around with. Um, we had to travel from uh, very many, many miles to the south to reach this point um, following the river. Um, we tracked the knights, um, and uh, Stave can speak more about some other effects in the area, um, but we believe the Celestial is also using teleportation magic to send the knights out into Aroes, um, giving them easy access to other locations, but they don't seem to be a lot of them, a small number. Um, but there is one matter that Stave should speak about, and Stave says, yes, I was present in the scouting party, and uh, it was my duty to analyze any sort of magical effects that may be in the area. This valley around Nightbloom Hold is very strange. There is an extremely strong and oppressive aura of necromancy in the area. Uh, it has created huge amounts of undead. Unusual undead, however. I have a passing knowledge of necromancy. It is not a particular field of my study, but it was something that I researched many eons before the, the Sundering when I was with Root Prime. <clears throat> I've never seen anything like this. The undead, when a necromancer 
animates a skeletal being. It, it normally has some sort of essence of the soul that it once was that binds it, animates it. It is a horrific, uh, enslaving, torturous existence for the soul. It is an affront to living things. These undead in Jakesh, around the hold, there is nothing like that there. They are bound by some magical force that is animating them, giving them strength and speed, um, unlike much of a normal undead that I've witnessed, but it links them in some way, almost like a hive mind, like a colony of ants or insects. It creates a sort of hive mind. Uh, I'm not able to tell what is controlling them, but it is present uh, nonetheless. Uh, we've also noticed that these undead tend to have black flowers and vines growing inside their bodies uh, seem to have been part of their process. The remains are ancient, we believe them centuries old, so they are mainly skeletal. Um, we have not seen any fresh bodies or, or the like in the area, though some animal carcasses have also been discovered. Uh, it may be that these creatures are also being animated. Um, as I said, Commander Hotshot has set up a forward operating base, but at this stage we understand these knights, um, we have encountered them, uh, we have encountered one knight uh, on our scouting. Um, they destroyed nearly 15 guardians alone. Uh, we have brought their bodies back for Sentinel Prime to take in their spirits, that we believe that their spirits are still intact. The Grief Knight... <laughs> its encounter with us was strange. It, it fought us uh, when it detected a threat, but after it had killed or destroyed a number of our bodies, it grew disinterested, um, and it fought only enough that we prevented it. Once we allowed it to leave, it stopped fighting us. Um, we believe that this may be connected to the nature of guardian deaths and our, our essences being trapped within our matrixes rather than being a soul of some sort. Um, that is, unfortunately, all the information we have uh, on the report, but we do have a location that we can guide you to. Um, but we are we are loath to engage these knights directly. Uh, they are far stronger than any of our guardians are capable of taking on. Okay. Um, does the do the knights seem to possess any abilities that we should be aware of? Yes. Yes, they are powerful. They they can channel some magic. Very competent warriors, uh, armored, uh, heavily armored. Um, unusual abilities. Uh, some seem to command swarms of insects. Some seem to have power over ice and cold. Uh, one was wreathed in flame that we saw. Um, powerful, uh, fiery, very armored, larger figure, perhaps. Um, but they are scattered. They do not ever seem to be in one location at one time. It is a mounted? We have not seen any mounts. Okay. But it's not impossible. The, the dense jungle makes it difficult for anything that is not on foot to traverse around. The, the the growth in the valley is is unusual as well. It has rapidly accelerated um, over the last few months. Do you believe they have some kind of connection with this hive mind? The knights? The knights or, as well, yeah. I could not say. It did not seem to be. They have command of these undead creatures, but I do not know if they are part of this hive mind. I, I Unfortunately, our encounter was brief, and I was more concerned with shielding and, and uh, offensive spells at the time uh, to rather than divination magics. Okay. Is there anything else you wish to know, Sentinel Prime or, or any others? Oh, what? Star Trek stuff. Oh. <laughs> I don't, I wasn't smiling at that. She's, uh, honest, if I ever do a reference, it's not intentional. No, they just sound like the Borg, and oh, the Borg right. have a hive mind. Oh yeah, because hive minds didn't exist before the Borg. <laughs> I know, but it's just the whole disinterested sure. thing until there's a threat, and then disinterested when it's very Borgy. Well, it wasn't, yeah, the, it wasn't necessarily a disinterest at the threat. Like, they fought when there was a threat. No, it, but that's the same with yeah, the Borg. Like, but, once they perceive a threat, No, this cage, was more but... when, it, and, you know, out of game, like, you guys... When were, they uh, discovered they didn't have they, a soul. Yeah, it was big, yeah. like, the Guardians don't die in the same way yeah. that normal creatures do, and that's what they were like, oh, no, I'm not, I don't care anymore. Mm. Like, they just walked off, basically. It's like the High Rollers version solved. of Simpsons Did It is uh, <laughs> a Star Trek Simpsons reference. did it! <laughs> yeah. Simpsons did it. Um, but yeah, so Stave will sort of say, we, they dispel the illusion, and it, uh, they just turn around and say, like, I, I'm, unfortunately, that is all the information I have at this time. That's a lot Six of information. Yeah, thank um, you. Very, very useful. Um, it's, I'm concerned about this um, celestial figure you were yes. sensing as well. Um, I wonder if there's any way that we can... I mean, we've tried sneaking before. I'm just thinking of the Abbey. But mm. if we can get to the celestial without the hive mind alerting the knights, they don't seem connected, which is good. Um, maybe trying to get past the knights themselves, but 
I don't know how. Uh, I don't know what powers it possesses, the Celestial. I cannot speak to the Knights and the Celestial, but I will tell you that there is, in the valley there is vast amounts of these undead. There are hundreds, hundred thousand. It is many. Um, the Ford operating base is at an elevated position, um, and we have to maintain a constant perimeter defense. In the, in the location, but having traveled through there, we were encountering packs of 20, 30 of these undead at a time. They they amass in great numbers. And if they share a mind and can be commanded as such, it seems, it seems to they be. could amass a huge force. Mm. The longer you fight them, if we, when we encountered them, um, Scout Dalsa has more uh, experience with this, but my experience was whenever we would encounter them, uh, we would try and dispatch whatever we encountered quickly, and then we would have to rapidly relocate. Mm. Uh, if you remain in an area, more will come. If you kill them, more come. Uh, it takes time, but they will constantly pursue. They do not seem to be skilled at tracking, so if you are lucky enough to move past them, uh, or if you do not encounter them by chance, you are relatively safe. But once they have detected you, it is very, you, you have to be clever and quick to get away. So they're not very agile? They're very, they're very quick and agile, but they do not seem to, they have no independent thought. They do not seem to be able to complete complex tasks, such as searching for uh, yeah. signs or uh, evidence of passing. But they are strong and quick. Uh, okay. The, the the natural elements, these flowers, almost seem to give them more strength than I would expect. I have encountered undead in many times in, in my my long, long career, and uh, I've encountered uh, undead before. And normally you can dispatch them with, with spells, that they are fairly easy, and they do not um, hit you particularly uh, powerfully. These are, these are quick to be destroyed, but they are also very harmful if they can get uh, hold of you. Uh, necrotic energies uh, emanate through them. Um, Mm -hmm. And they are stronger in number as well. I wonder if there's anything we can do to, ne to negate the effect of the flowers, if they are giving them some kind of strength. Could we maybe use the trees as a tactical advantage? Maybe find a way of traversing through the trees instead of on ground, perhaps? One thing we also noticed is we carried uh, one of our number... I hate a spell. <laughs> one of our number was... <laughs> Uh, is a is a uh, I suppose a, a cleric or a priest you would call them. Um, they draw power from the matrix, uh, and their their holy energy that they called forth were, was able to destroy these creatures as if they were skeletal undead minions. Mm. Uh, so they if you have turned. such powers, yes, we they can be turned. Radiant uh, sort of energies do seem to have a great effect on them uh, when other types perhaps do not. Um, but uh, myself. They do not seem to have any concern for their own well-being. Mm. Um, a well-placed lightning bolt, or a fireball in my case, uh, was able to dispatch large numbers of them. But, as I said, if you are not quick to get away, you, more and more come. Uh, it becomes dangerous to fight them for a long time. So you hear that, Ayla? We need to smash and move, not stick around. We need to smash, grab, smash, run, mm, run. Just frowns. I'm not going to play. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> just sort of like, mm, don't like that. But it is also the thing that Valor is focusing on right now, mm -hmm. and probably our next key um, god. Danica I... will look and say, I am god. concerned by this. I am no priest. Perhaps we, I know that we have uh, Miss Ravenscar, the priestess of Kalara, that you seem to know, Scaldi, I think her name was. She is here, she's not well. Um, but what I know of, of Kalara, creating undead is an antithesis of what she was. The Order of the Black and Rose sought out to destroy undead. This is either a very bad sign that she is far worse than we thought. She is in a far worse condition than Zephyr or, or any of the other Titans, or there is something else. It's some corruption. Perhaps, but uh, I don't know. I can't speak to it, but um, yeah. undead, normal undead. I mean, it sounds like these. there's something unusual about these undead uh, if they do not have these spirits, but like creating normal undead is, is an antithesis of what Kalara believed in. Yes, to go from the previous reports of just a few nights to now the whole area having undead presence. Hundreds of thousands amassing. We need to deal with this quickly, I think. To clarify, I do not believe that they, this is an army being gathered. The undead almost seem to be a, a symptom of a greater cause. They are being conjured, summoned, perhaps drawn to the area. Right. But whatever is controlling them is really not directing them in any way. 
there is something that unites them, but it is not like this is, we do not see them preparing to march or war or oh, anything right. like that. Uh, Just reactionary. Seems to be, but I am not sure if this area will expand if left for too much longer or if it will grow stronger. I do not know. Um, certainly, it was not there. Our consultant, we have consulted with locals of Jakesh, and that has not always been the case. The, the, the Nightbloom Hold was a, a place of safety. It was a place that they knew the knights were, and it was almost seen as a holy site of Kalara. Um, but now no one travels into the valley. They have too many dark rumors and whispers of foul things in the shadows. Are there any settlements nearby that maybe need to evacuate? Uh, not for miles and miles. The dense jungle means that there are settlements where we initially uh, exited our airship. Um, we had to travel for days following a river okay. up uh, to, to reach it. Um, and as I said, the, the undead in the area do not seem to be moving towards the settlement. They are just around this hold. Um, mm. The last time we were in, uh, or tried to come back to Horizon, we were blocked um, by a strong forces, uh, blocking teleportation. Is there any indication by which Zarkira was doing these things? Uh, yeah, if you, are you asking the council that? Are you asking Stave? Or? In a long way, how is she blocking teleportation? Azaria will say, I believe I can answer that mm -hmm. question. Um, this Zarkira, what a, what a nemesis I seem to have. Her mind is devilishly clever. Um, do you remember that there were these mechanical dragon-like creatures around the city? Mm -hmm. Very much so. There was a device built into them. Uh, we found that the teleportation blocking ability was connected to these devices hidden in the dragons. They were moving around the city and, and constantly keeping, keeping it uh, active. For all of my research, I have been unable to fully uh, reverse engineer the enchantments upon this device. It is bizarrely complex and, and written in a very alien script and language. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how it was possible, but I do believe it is exceedingly difficult to recreate and expensive as well. There were many valuable reagents used within those dragons. Um, they've been put to good use. You need not worry about that. Um, but yes, I believe that uh, some power well beyond any force here on Erois, unfortunately. Okay. I was hoping we might be able to block their teleportation. Uh, cage them in while we slowly remove night after night. <laughs> but apparently... I could put one in a ball. One, the Celestial. The Celestial mm. should go in the ball. Yes. Yes, you do still need to acquire me to suitable subjects. That could be a very potent one. If this Celestial is connected to this necrotic energy, that would create a rather... not difficult problem, but it would be worth considering something. If you have a Celestial who is infused with negative energy, normally it is the opposite of Celestial is infused with positive, radiant energy, you would need to find a fiend that has an infusion of radiant energy. Remember uh, the opposites. The... Oh, that would be very difficult to acquire. Stranger things have happened. If there is a Celestial infused with negative energy, it is entirely possible there may exist a fiend with Positive. Just energy. capture them just anyway, just in case. You know, it's still a start. Well, the the usage of this ball is limited to one. Uh, so I can only, you would have to release this necrotic celestial to capture another, mm -hmm. unless I have installed it in one of the engines. I imagine you'd love to meet a necrotic celestial. Yes, I would. That would be fascinating. Uh, uh, such a such a strange twist of nature is what has caused such a thing. Well, I'm sure... But I have plenty to be keeping me busy, but with this story, I, I cannot wait to Yes, I was going it. to say, I'm sure we'll be in touch regarding that. Yes, please. At least the Astoria is keeping her away from you two, and Nova points at Quill's eye. That's what I was saying. Saying. I told you. I knew it. It may even be possible, once I've studied the Astoria, I may be able to develop other ways of travelling astral space, if I can figure out how Velena has done it. It'd be very useful. Yes, I will look into it. We do need a fleet of ships to take with us, do we not? Yes, and speaking of ships, Lily and Sprocket, who you yes. worked with. The delightful known couple. I think it would be <laughs> worthwhile them and their crew assessing the Astoria as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, well, they... yes bring whoever you wish. As long as I'm left to my investigations, I do not mind who you bring. Right. Very Just well. smiles creepily. Um, dead eyes. <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, Stave and Dowser <laughs> will just uh, bow to Sentinel Prime. Um, when you have time, Sentinel Prime, the bodies of the fallen guardians, uh, we have them waiting uh, in, in the barracks nearby uh, that Horizon were kind enough to present with us. Um, we would like you to come and, and take their souls and give us uh, and, and install new ones into their matrices, if that is possible. Of course, yes. Marvellous. We will wait you there. Thank you. Uh, goodbye, champions. Uh, Dowser, good goodbye, and they kind of Guardians. scurry off together. Uh, nice. Cool. Um, Danica will say, that is all the information we have for you. All right, well, um, unless we have any questions for anyone here in the Citadel. Um, I mean, I am concerned about the beasts evolving uh, quicker and quicker, but again, I still feel like our biggest threat is Kalara and the knights. Um, for General Faelis of the Blue Dragon, who's in a humanoid form, will say, the beasts, the dragons, I think, can help with. We can, we can be, keep them. We can keep them away from settlements. These wild elf hunters are likely the ones who will figure out how to truly vanquish them, but we dragons would certainly be able to go more toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and confound them, lure them away, uh, especially the ones in the... We have dragons who are capable of operating underwater as well. Um, Phenomenal. Um, we must do our part. Uh, if I may make a request. Uh, and Phyllis is like this big, kind of like very tall, very muscular, blue, wo like woman with like blue horns and blue hair. Um, <clears throat> this Astoria, if there is a way, whatever is powering it must be immense and, and strong. An essence of the world engine, I think you might have mentioned. I would love some of our mages to come and speak with you. There may be a way of awakening the dragons that slumber within our own vessels. We know that they are connected to power, but there is no way to wake them. We were hoping that Siaska may be able to do so, but uh, if we can awaken them early, that would give us more defenses, more weapons that we can use. There are three such ships here on Aroes. If we could restore those, they are equivalent to the greatest of Kallus' warships. They are of the same design and make but just possessed of a draconic spirit rather than an Eterna. With the Vivex itself? Yes, of course. Wow. Just need more fragments of the world engine. It may be that there is a way to perhaps siphon a spark of it, something to jolt the dragon spirits awake. Where They are slumbering, they're not gone. We just have no way of waking them up. Hmm. And I apologize if this is an offense to you. Um, I will forgive you for any offense you cause. Great. What if the slumbering dragons are not of a mind to assist? Ah, if your enemy is Callus Valkyrian, they will assist. All right, what if Remember, it's not? She looks at you. What if it's just the other forces? <laughs> the ones aligned with Hadar? Mm. Then I guess it would depend on what agreement we come to with Starbane. Remember, he took our world long before he came to Aroes. Draconia was our world. Draconis is, is our land, our plane. If he were to give it back, release our people that we know he has captured, it could be conceived. It may take a lot of persuading, but the older dragons, I think, could be convinced if we got Draconis back. And if we have the older dragons, the ancient spirits, I believe, will listen to them. Just making it clear and transparent that that we're going to be speaking with Starway and figuring out what position they're in right now with their paused forces. Mm. Mm. I am not, I'm a warrior. I do not put much stake in diplomacy. My claws are ready for battle. If you can ensure that a battle is not necessary, I suppose that is less of a problem. Well, but I do not hold much stake in it. It's good to be defensive. You just do not forget the dragons have fought Callus once before. He convinced half of our world to join him, the rest he put to the sword. We are the survivors of that encounter, or the children of those survivors. I have seen what that man is capable of. Um, don't worry, we are not going to repeat history where we can, mm. and we will learn from the mistakes of the past. Where possible. Very good. Oh. With that, the dragons will aid in 
keeping these beasts at bay as long as we can. If they continue to grow stronger, that may even prove too much for some of my kind. We are, there are not many of us true dragons left, and the dragonborn, as great warriors as they are, I fear that they would not be able to withstand uh, these beasts for long. If you can send word to us as quickly as you can, we will assist once will, we've dealt with. I will inform one of the more magically inclined dragons to do so. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, with that, Danica, are we done? Yes, we are done here. Thank you all. Uh, we will speak soon. Um, keep us updated. She will sort of miss everyone. She, she remains in the chamber with you guys, like the others all get up and leave. Um, Azaria basically runs out the door. <laughs> like, obviously okay. Astoria. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Keen beans. Um, well, okay. Um... If you want, I can leave this chamber with you, if you have plans, or... or... Do you have any further thoughts? No, no, I... I, I off the I, record? No, I, I think that we have done all we can. I think that we are growing in allies. Uh, the dragons, I'm still wary of them, but I know that they are going to... We are going to need them in whatever happens. Um, just because they are... Mil- not that I don't trust them, I, I just do not trust their recklessness. Um, it could be very useful right now against three giant monsters. Indeed, that so. is why I did not say anything. <coughs> Valor told me of the Star Seed, um, and like I said, we I do not believe that that is information we should share beyond our most trusted companions because it is it is hope, but it is also a despair. It is also a, a knowledge and acceptance that we will lose. Uh, Horizon will continue to provide what support we can. Uh, this Astoria, if we can learn from it, I may speak with Azaria. If there is a way that the sliver of the world engine can power the story enough to travel to astral space, if I can find a way to unlock greater depths of the Phoenix's power, I may be able to do the same for Horizon. But I will need to know how the magic works. We will need to install devices that I can power, that sort of thing. But well, if anyone's going to get the bottom of that, that will be me. Be Zarya and you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are correct. Zarya would get to the bottom of how but it works. But you totally do it too. I'm um, the one who's yeah. doing it. Yes, let's of course. make that clear. <laughs> yes, you're of course. Very but powerful. yes, um, um, nothing else from me. No. Oh, also um, to go back to the Star Seed and similar uh, thoughts, uh, we were discussing a contingency in which maybe the uh, Astoria could become a vessel to. Um, Ferry people from Aroes off the planet if that situation arises as well. One we didn't want to discuss with the council. Um, mm. I think that, that that is an option if if Callus is still intent on war and we do not think we can stop him, uh, then Aroes would be destroyed and we would need to ferry people away. At that point, it may even be worth us surrendering, the people of Aroes surrendering and joining Callus just to spare their lives. If Hadar is successful, being on the Astoria won't save anyone. True. That's true, yeah. I, I think that it would be good, if, if there is anything I've learned from Horizon, it is soldiers need their families near them. They, they fight best when they feel that they are protecting people they care for. Soldiers need entertainment, they need food. Uh, we cannot just put soldiers in the Astoria. We will need to give civilians positions as well. Um, and I think perhaps if we maybe find those who are in desperate need, uh, we can always provide for them. But with these Valkyrian forces stalled, there are no war fronts. We do, at the moment, there is nobody suffering on Aroes. There were a few misplaced places, but even then, I must admit, Valkyrian's forces have not been unkind to our people. Those who have fought against them, they have fought, they have captured if resisted, or they have killed if they have fought back. But those who have surrendered have been treated with civility, from what we can understand. Nobody is suffering currently on Aroes. It's good to hear. As, as much as we can tell. Uh, obviously, places like Vortensar, our information is less uh, detailed, but even there, the people for the most part, seem happy with the choices. Giselle, it is the same situation. Giselle and other places, they have problems, but they are not... Uh, we do not have a, a swathe of refugees or people who have been displaced, luckily. Uh, we have not seen a war like that on Aroes since the very beginnings of... since this conflict all began many, many years before any of us. Well, not century. Uh, and technically not me, but it was a few lifetimes ago. Mm. Still, uh, I've been rambling enough. Um, you are likely all tired, and and uh, please, obviously, as always, you are welcome to rest, and I can have guards sent and dispatched to do any idle tasks that you still have. 
Okay. Uh, is Arvel still here? Yes, yes, I believe your dwarven friend is still here, along with the young lady of Sentinel Primes, and uh, I believe your partner is waiting outside, uh, Miss Vija. Um, and your friend Valor, our friend Valor, I should say, I've become quite fond of the girl, uh, and Maximilian are both tucked away in their libraries, studying, as always. Uh, I believe as uh, any allies that you have are here, as they should be. Great. Okay. All right. I think we should start populating this story as soon as we can. Yes. So if you want to send word to... Uh, the Baroness Coruscant and Duke Savano. Yes. Uh, do you think? Do you do you want Rana. to send? The, do you want to send the Tritons? My my fear is that their skill is fighting in the sea. I do not know. Well, the Guardians for sure. I the, think. Yes, step. the Guardians we can. And I think that I think that Duke Savano's men, a few of them at least, they they know how to work a ship and they know how to fight uh, on board. You know, a vessel. Uh, they could be useful additions. They could at least accompany Azaria. Yes, Lillian Sprocket. Yeah. Yes, let us. Well, I will have a I, survey the land. We can send a few airships with the guardians and with Savrano's men and and women, of course, with swashbucklers, shall we call them? Um, we won't use the P word. Uh, sailors, uh, perhaps. Uh, we will send Savrano's uh, forces uh, with the guardians, and we will begin to um, at least defend the Astoria should anything attack it. Yes. How Very integral good. is rain to Horizon? Are you asking? Danica as Nova, or is this an OOC question? Da Nova's Nova to Danica. Um, Rain is a talented young mind, talented officer. Um, they have they have done great work here. But if you feel that their service would be greater on the Astoria, they would be honoured. There are teleportation circles that are currently unguarded, and obviously, with a mass influx of people suddenly joining Astoria, it would perhaps be good to have a security force that we trust. Yes, that is eye. that is very well acquainted to to Rain's skills, without a doubt. Yes, I can absolutely have him sent there uh, along with them. I think he would I think he would relish the challenge and also the opportunity to prove himself. He can also pick his crew. Mm. Yes, he, I, I imagine he will take guard, Horizon guards with him. Uh, he, Obviously not too many from you, but... We have plenty. Uh, Rain has uh, a few a few squadrons that he works with on a regular basis. I will, I will have them. Good started. idea, Nova. That's a good one. Mm. He also has uh, free reign to install... Rain. Free reign to install um, <laughs> any uh, magical... Uh, security measures. Security measures as need be. I'm sure we can coordinate that with Miss Perel. She mm -hmm. seems to be the, the main chief of that sort of uh, ability. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we have we have a few majors that can help you. Yes, all right. Very well, I will okay. dispatch those. Um, it is good to see you, and I'm glad that your ridiculous adventures continue to go positively. Y yeah, yeah. I'm not even going to ask. I'm just going to just move on. Ask what? I... As somebody who is often born into new bodies and, and grow. Oh, I'm a, yes, <laughs> I'm a bird. He I, keeps forgetting. Yes. It's new, it's fresh. It's, oh. Yes, go on. Entire meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. Everyone was being very polite, and I think we weren't going to draw attention to it. Not sure if this was some He did it to himself. We did assume. I did not think <laughs> that Valena would have done it to him, but um, yes. I, do you intend on reversing? Is it, is it possible to reverse this change? Um, considering it, yes. Just so that, you know, it doesn't cause any obstacles or awkward pauses in meetings, which are very important. Mm. Uh, well, good luck. I hope you can find a way to do so. Thank you. Nothing wrong with it. No, nothing wrong with it. No, no. I am going to leave now. Okay. And <laughs> Danica will awkwardly, like, ooh. Maybe uh, we should speak to Arvel. Uh, try to arrange uh, his fleet of ships. Start ferrying people across. Possibly. Have you two made up, by the way? Sorry? Yeah. Have you... Don't you ever do it again? I won't, oh. sir. What did he do? I don't... What? Ayla's just... I'm confused. What did he do? That is strictly well, confidential between crew and captain. Well, I just want to know in case we make mistakes as... Yeah. Well, you won't, will How you? can we learn from this? Don't make mistakes. But... What, you don't uh, want to make mistakes. What kind of mistakes? How am I supposed to know what mistakes yeah. to not make if we don't know what You'll mistakes know. to not make? I don't like I'll that. I'll let you though. know. Okay. I lied. <laughs> it was all a joke. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, nothing. It was. There was nothing. It was just an intimidation. I was just thing. making sure. Me. Ah. There you go. I'm so confused. It's pretty funny. What's going on? We no. would. We performed. It was a. It was being, a thing. Him being 
upset and Making angry. It looked like he was, was a scary much? captain. I thought you were really upset. I, oh, I'm I so sorry, yeah. Sentry. I, I thought you sorry, were going to like throw him. You guys are jerks. Yeah. yeah. You, did you think that Lucius was a scary captain for a bit though? I did. Yeah. yeah. See. I did. Some of the wolf packs saw it. It works on the wolf pack, and they really like that sort of. But they don't need you to be scary. You told Starbane to shut up. We've seen you be scary, so imagine that well, he to was Quill. Being a little poopy head he at the time. Scary. You don't need to be scary to be respected. No, you're right. But the wolves love it. The wolves do. I did drink also, a lot also, with them. They also love you. Oh. As you are. You're married to one of them. As a peacock? I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think there for a minute, didn't you? I did. <laughs> Sure, Faith would love to know that. No, it's fine. <laughs> so um, it's a mutual agreement. It is, yeah. Question. So you want to speak to Marvel. It is getting late uh, in Horizon. Like, you guys, uh, it took six hours to travel here. You were doing, like, a whole thing in the, in the vault. It is, like, night time. It's, like, sort of, okay, like, nine, 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 ten o'clock. Um, you can go see Arvel. He's just in your... He's, you've got your suites, him and Petal. I think we'd probably yeah, discuss these things in a kind of relaxed, like, having dinner kind of way. Well, that's the thing. With Arvel as well, if it's just, like, can he use his network to help ship things yeah. and... Yeah, he's, like, absolutely he can do Billion. that. Like, he doesn't have a huge... He doesn't, he's got, like, maybe, like, five or six airships that he can redirect. But he does tell you it means that he won't be able to, like, fund anything. Like, he paid for, like, a lot of the Perel's reagents to build the, the Storm Chaser mm. to upgrade it. He can't do that if he's using his mm. network to like basically transport well, stuff to the Astoria. We'll mention that we've thankfully got Duke Sovranos okay. and his wealth yeah, yeah, yeah. to maybe offset some of that. Yeah, okay. Well, Arvo will be like, yeah, I know the Duke, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, and he'll kind of make sense. So yeah, we can we can do something. And he's like, oh, and I guess it comes down to like, what's the, in, what's the, what outcome do you want from like Arvo doing this? Like, is this like, because as Danica told you, it's not like there's like loads of refugees who have been displaced from places. It's not like necessarily that. It's also just getting like supplies people and stuff. And okay. Supplies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like transport. a quartermaster, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that, that, that's easy enough. Establishing yeah. trade yeah. with essentially a new sky. Yeah. City. There's there's no real cost apart from Arvel just can't pay for stuff now. Um. Mm. But yeah. yeah, and the benefit is just like yeah, he's gonna coordinate sending people there and helping the guardians get there and stuff like that. Also, like you were saying, that soldiers need to fight among their families and stuff. I imagine this being Well, more that they new... fight harder if they know that they're like, yeah. their family's there and they're protected. But I mean, like this being essentially another sky city, there's going to be like businesses trying to move into yeah. the place and yeah. exist Maybe there. Maybe you could and a yeah. merchant's yeah. guild or something. Yeah, and I think that like the way he, him and Rain would probably be like, yeah, we need to make sure we don't let sort of like, you know, irreputable people come in and like make sure that like people aren't overcharging for like supplies like they're going to have to set rules and Arvel's like yeah I can do that I can he'll, he'll basically come on but and he'll, he'll basically yeah be a quarter master of the Astoria like he'll basically take over as sort of like the resource uh, and supply economist yeah basically it's, easy. Yeah. it's really easy I'd also suggest <laughs> getting advice from Prince Aradan of Gusthaven okay Gusthaven was founded on refugees all right. Well, we can, we can. I can definitely speak to the prince. I've met him. I know him. Uh, there's an established set of rules over centuries that have helped, and we've already gone through. That's all right. Thing that, that'd corruption. be great. Yeah, if the Gusthaven has a history of that. Yeah, and you, yeah, which is true. You have the Accords, which is how the, the Sky City survived. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Cool. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, that's easily done. Like we don't need to role play all that out. That's that's an easy thing. Century. Do you need anyone with you for when you do your communing with the Guardians? Um, do you want to give us you some space? Do you want to get petal? I don't. I don't mind if people want to come, and they're more than welcome to. I, I would like to come. Petal's like there because she's having dinner with you guys. She's with Arvel. She's like, I, I, yeah. I'd like to come. Of course, yeah. It's, it's always a it's yours and mother's a real sight to behold. Mm -hmm. so new, of course. New people coming out, <laughs> others going in to rest, oh. um, and and maybe a crew to join us. Yeah. As we go to the jungle. <laughs> uh, all right, so you can do that now. Do you guys, like, do you want to do that and then take a long rest? Will it only take eight hours for that to happen? Huh? Will it only take a short time? I thought that was like going to be a long time. You were what, for restoring the Guardians? Yeah. No, since you can do that. Oh, quick. I thought this was the finding a general in there. Oh, God, no, no, no. That would take a, yeah, that would take a longer time. Like, I figured this was to go and help the Guardians who were like, the, the dead, guard, the dead yeah, Guardians yeah. that have come Put back. New and, life yeah, exactly. Like, I figured it was that. That's what you were referring to. Yeah. That would be really quick. Um, again, I'm, you know, easy. I can do it if you want to, Re, <laughs> but like, it just beep, yeah, it's scan them in. Just, <laughs> after what you did, label on this. <laughs> after what you did at the City of Glass, 
class where you restored like thousands of guardians mm. at once, like this is now so natural to you. It's like, yeah. you know, and I'm not gonna role play the whole thing, but like, yeah, you place your hand, you can pull in the soul that was basically diminished in the same way that you were when you were killed. Um, and then you can put a brand new soul in it and the body will start to shift and change and it adapts to, to you know, accommodate that new guardian basically the natural parts begin to shift and change um but yeah you can do that's easily enough and yeah. you've all seen it before what are they all individually now uh, i'm not doing uh, there's and a bunch of them no nope, i'm not doing that i've not got the brain power in me to do that today chris Tra. i don't have 20 npc <laughs> guardian names sitting in my head but there are they are really cool and you love them there you go uh <laughs> while, while petals here there's also something else that i want to do sure um i want to um give Petal Her Majesty's Rose. Yeah. So yeah, she'll 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 take it and say, I, I haven't seen this in in forever. This was this was Rook's sword. I remember he was all him and him and Bishop were always with mother and, and they carried sort of a sword and shield each. Uh, that was what they carried. What, why are you giving this to me? I can't I don't know how to fight with a sword, Sentry. It was the same reason that I was given all of my gifts. And you're a gift to me. Sentry, I, I, I just don't know what to say, thank you, but I, I guess I can maybe find lessons or something? I, I, or you could teach me a little bit what you know? i to teach you. Yes, of course. There might, but... be, there might be a day where you may need to use it, unfortunately. I think that that day is coming, yes. Uh, I know a little bit of magic, but I've never really done sword play before, but if, if you can teach me, I'll, I'll try and learn. It'll be an honour to teach you. Of course. Love to. Petal will take the sword, yeah. She can start learning to use that. She's got Red Mage as a class now. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Anyway. Just don't sell it in the shop. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, she'll take that. that a thing, and, I think, and I think that there'll be a bigger thing Imagine. as well, like maybe maybe next episode or the episode after, like where you know Petal does say she wants to go see the Astoria. She wants to see the ship. Yeah, as well. Of course. Um, cool. Yeah, I was wondering oh. if that would blow her yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. She, not blow her mind, like she can kind of mix, she remembers solving she it. It'll be like centuries, but yeah. it'll be like century, like, mm. like this is home. Like, yeah. uh, so it'll be it's like a that. Ship now. Yeah, so yeah, we got that. Um, um, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh, we need to go uh, contact the uh, Spell Clash. Uh, yes. People yeah. in that. Stuff like that, that like the grand strategist can help organize that. That's going to be a lot of like sending messages. Like you don't know everybody who, there. Who gets in contact? What do you mean? Like the individual spell. I don't. <laughs> Try right. see. This is Mark saying, "Give me a phone. Give me a couple <laughs> of weeks, guys, to figure that out." Um, but yes, that stuff will. That can all be sort of like dealt with in a, in a very quick outer layer of like, yep, yeah, you can get a bunch of those guys and you'll have a chance to meet them and stuff like that. But that's not going to happen immediately. Do you think we should uh, message them as you know our? Spell Clash name. We barely made a dent <gasps> I think some clash. of them might I remember us. I did very well. They didn't get a token in the end. Oh, no, that's true. The painted prints, though. Maybe they'll respond to that. What was I again? I don't remember. The... It was so long ago. I was going to say the wizard sleeve. Don't... <laughs> 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 that should have been that. <laughs> um... um. I can't yeah. remember. It's somewhere yeah. in here. All of the spell, we'll, we'll, that can be figured out another time, and it will take time anyway, because they'll be scattered all over Aroas, so they'll need to be gathered up. All freelancers. Um, it's the kind of thing that when you get back from dealing with Kalara, there might be progress on it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I guess okay. what we do is... You know, like how in video games you're like, right, set all these things up, go do a story mission, come yeah. back. It's all <laughs> changed. Um, probably rest, I imagine, and then go see sure. how Val is doing. Can I... Before we do that, can I try and send a message to Tornado? Yep. Um, I guess I'd have... What, sending? I'd have to use um, Quill. Yep. So I don't know. Um, Be nice. You can't, I've only got 25 words, so don't waste it on stupid, idiot, dumb, things like that. I'm not going to say that. You were going to... Let me read the message. Ooh. Do you want to rewrite the message? Maybe. You're going to have to. How many words was it? Here, how about I position Thalia right here so she can watch? Oh, Thalia agrees with me. I've told her everything. Okay, Thalia, maybe there's something else for you to do. <laughs> also, You're I'd like him. to see you try and position me anywhere. Oh, I'd like to see that too. I won't. I won't dare. She's just got like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> just magically appears out of nowhere. Like, Go on. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, but, uh, the, I'm walking away. I position you. She's like, she, she'll escort Lucius away so that you and Tom, you can. Oh God, I forgot she literally she marches yeah. you away like an, like an officer. Thanks, yeah. babe. She's got her magic gun. She's got a spell gun. Thanks, babe. No problem, babe. I tried, Quill. Oh, okay. She called me babe. 
Okay, uh, now that you've shortened the message. <clears throat> Dear brother. Dear brother. Idiot. I'm not saying that. There's no one else around here, is there? And you're the only one with supernatural hearing. Okay, come in close. Wait, hang on. I'm going to have to be honest with you. I do like to tell Lucius things. <sighs> you told her about all the messages I sent Thalia, didn't you? No. Cuts to me with Thalia's like, I know everything. <laughs> yeah, was, and she's like, yeah, of course she does. Yes, that's all you like. I don't know yeah. why Nova's so weird about keeping secrets about it. I think it's just it's you're, fine. You'll you'll open her up. Mm. I shouldn't have said that. Mm. It's weird. Mm. <laughs> Not wrong. I blurted it. He was badgering me. Fine. Fine. Okay. Dear, Dear brother. brother. I want to help you, but I don't know how. Mm hmm Tell me and I will do it. Uh, got six more words. I'm so proud of you. You try and cast the sending spell, it does not reach its destination. Did it send Quill? As if something was blocking it. Has he got a reply? As if something was blocking it. Yeah. yeah, you can tell, you would tell if the person just didn't exist, if they were dead or something like that. This was like a bat, like, um, like trying to div use a divination through a, an area where you can't use divination magic or like, you know, that kind of magic. Okay. Is he replying now, Quill? Uh, no, no, he's, uh, it, it, it was blocked, uh, magically blocked. Um, not that it didn't attempt to reach him, it was sent, but it was blocked. Magically. Okay. That's fine. I can remember it, but try again next time. He's fine. I can... He'll be fine. I, I it's fine. I can trying to send it if you want. Yes, please. Okay. This I'll, is I'll, fine. I'll let you know if, it, if I get a message back. Thank you, Quill. Yeah, it does still use up the spell slot. Yep. You doing okay? I'm fine. Okay. I'm gonna go over to where Thalia is now. Okie dokie. Tell her to put this device down, please, Nova. I put my gun away ages ago. Oh, I, I didn't look. <laughs> oh, you know, the bird eyes, yeah. You're probably looking in weird directions. Um, uh, Sentry, we have a morale issue. I'm not sure if you're watching, but she's very much not fine. Okay, okay, I'll fix that. Um, that's, uh, that's on you. She likes red velvet cupcakes. Does she? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make some of those. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah distract. Okay, good. Okay. Just want you guys to know. Well, do you guys want to go longer or do you want to finish like on time? <laughs> we can finish on time. I mean, have you got much more left? <laughs> I, I prepped some of your favorite things uh, ready for when you took a long rest. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go. Like, let's let's go. go. No, 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 let's, let's fucking go. go. Hey. Like, I'm you sleeping. You might need to end it because poor Sam will have to shoot off. But I collapse on the spot. Okay. Yeah. Insta sleep. All right. Yeah. Insta sleep. Toy Story. You guys dream. Hell yeah. Some of you dream. Quill. Oh no. Why me first? <laughs> <laughs> you find yourself on the top of a tower, staring across a peaceful valley at night. Despite the darkness, there is enough light to see the shapes of mountains and the lights of civilization of a great city in the valley below you. A great temple, a familiar temple, stands at the end of the valley, a winged humanoid figure carved into the mountain above it. Something of the perspective, the tower, reminds you of a similar dream once before. You notice as well that the familiar prismatic glow of the cradle is not there. Instead, the sky is littered with brilliant lights, many big and bright, that shine down on the world. Some of them move slowly and steadily, growing brighter or fainter. You realize that some of these lights are stars, distant planes in the astral sea, and some of them are ships coming and going to Aroes. You know these ships somehow. You know these bring visitors and settlers and take the people of Aroes to see new places and people beyond their imaginings. It is a peaceful world. You sense a familiar presence, soft air and wind, a light touch on your shoulder. You hear the cry of gulls and smell the sea breeze. Vibrations like the beat of a hammer against anvil seem to pass over you from this presence. 
a soft, feminine voice calls to you. You have always seen the possibilities of the future and the pain of the past. Whenever you envisioned yourself a proud messenger of the guild as a young boy, or you pictured the sad origins of a strange person you met on a lost road, Hesper knew this of you. He trusted you with a precious gift, to use that gift to learn, to grow, to ask questions. I am not he, but he is my son. He is my curiosity, he is my mind. Now he has returned to my heart, along with two more of my children, and my power returns. My body sleeps, but my essence dreams, and here the dream of a god meets the dream of her champions. What do you think you can see? Wait. Use the valley before you, I described earlier. Um, I see a hopeful future, a dream for Aroeth. As I have said, you have always been able to see the possibilities of the future. Hesper chose well. That's a question. Hesper chose well. Lucius. Friggin' see yes. <gasps> Cause he's not an elf anymore! He's not an elf. Cool! <laughs> oh! You walk down the streets of Gusthaven. You know the route well. It is the path home. Oh no. The um, Elanasto estate oh. is missing, but a long dinner table stands in the green field where it once would have stood. You see many people sat at this long table. Some are misty, ethereal things. You know they are people, but their features, their clothes, their voices are unimportant. But some you know well. You see your companions, Sentry, Ayla, Quill, Nova. You see the crew of the Storm Chaser, Araya, Faith, Kamara, Howard, all of them. You see Prince Aradan and your sister, Edea. They are speaking with your father, Virian, and your mother, Elowin. They are laughing together. Your father looks relieved, as though the weight of years and stress has been taken away. What do you do? He, well, Lucius would just observe for a little while. Just to really soak them in. Yeah. And then gently walk towards them. Okay. As you step closer, the sky darkens. The city becomes engulfed by a pitch black void. And that dinner table becomes enshrouded by a red light. It leaves, the darkness leaves only a small space around you and the dinner table before it slows to a crawl, an inch by inch. Nobody else seems to mind or notice the darkness or the light. They're happy, but your heart aches in pain and feels like it will burst inside your chest. Your body shakes and trembles, the air so thin you gasp for every breath. The darkness looms and a voice seems to call out. I will end it. End the pain, the fear, the grief. Come to me. What do you do? He considers it for a moment. Mm -hmm. It would be easy. Yes. Easy. Painless. But what is it all for? The darkness doesn't answer. See, that's the problem. You're not an answer. And I'm still looking for one. The darkness rushes towards you in a burst of speed, a great fanged maw of inky black reaching out to swallow you in rage. And you hear the cry of a gull. 
You feel the wind blow behind you and the resounding slam of a hammer against an anvil. Motes of light surround you as waves of faint prismatic light, very much like your own magic, weaves around you like waves and air and begins to hold the darkness back. Your companions, your crew, now notice the darkness. They rush towards it and they drive it back beyond Gusthaven, away from Erois. And as far as they go, you still see the light of Sentry's Matrix. You see the flash of Ayla's lightning, of Nova's Tiangong, and Quill's magic still there, present, holding that darkness away. A feminine voice speaks to you. There is no peace in the void. There is no relief for those who are consumed by it. Those are things only the living and the ascended can have. You feel your family stand beside you. Your mother holds your hand, your sister leans against your other arm, and you feel your, shoulder, your father's hands around your shoulders proudly, sort of standing behind you. Battles fought and lost. Great accomplishments, grand adventure, jokes with friends, the comfort of a lover, small joys, frivolous pleasures. Every second we live is defiant against the power of time itself. Every minute we say, I will try, is something to be proud of. We do not need to all be great leaders or warriors, oracles or scholars. Art. Words, music, they hold a power all their own. Artists can see the beauty in things others do not. Musicians can change a heart when words and spells cannot. Without these things, the heart of a world is lost. You have always seen the world in beautiful ways. My body sleeps, but my essence dreams, and here the dream of one god meets the dream of her champions. Who are you? That's a question. I am Lucius Virian Elowen Elanaster. The dream ends. Very finally, I know we're running over, potentially running over a bit. Oh, hell yeah. Over Vija. Oh no. <laughs> You find yourself in an old city. You don't recognize it, but there is something familiar about it. It is empty, but clean, and no signs of battle. You stand in a deserted plaza, buildings all around you with blue skies overhead. At the edge of the plaza is a great statue of Siaska raised on a platform with short steps leading up to a shrine of the Star Mother at the base of the statue. On those steps sits Callus Valkyrian. I did not think we would meet again in this way, Nova Vija. Neither did I. Um, are you okay? <laughs> what a question to ask your enemy, sort of cast that back towards you. I guess in some ways you are, but in others, I, I've always said I see your logic and I see your connections and I see your motives and I wish, I wish you would see ours. Huh. What an interesting phrasing, given what ever your friend Ayla did. I have seen much, but I still have many questions, and I will not find the answers to those questions here on Aroas. I do not know if you will tell your military allies, or if you will keep this to you and your close companions. I do not have the power to stop you either way. I am leaving Erois for a short period of time. There are answers I must find. 
questions that must be asked based on what you and your kin showed me. But before I go, I come with two warnings. One for all of you, one for you. I warn all of you, you and your companions who have marked yourselves the champions of Aroes. Atelicus, I know that you are restoring Siaska, helping the Titans rejoin her. Some of them have been driven to unnatural desires. Atelicus is different to the other Titans. This is not something that your history would ever teach you. They've revered Atelicus as a god, a protector, a warrior. But remember, I was there. I fought them. I know Siaska. Atelicus, the Titans, you know what they are. Yes, you know that they are aspects of Siaska's personality, elements of herself. Yes. For the most part, these Titans were created from positive traits of Siaska, things that she is proud of. Her curiosity, her sense of adventure, her love of life and stories. There are a few exceptions. Zephyr was perhaps more rebellious than she realized. Siaska's own rebellious streak influencing her adventurous side. But Atelicus is different. Atelicus is born of feelings that Siaska did not hold in high regard about herself. Atelicus is her temper, her protective nature, her desire to grow stronger in order to protect. And much like Zephyr, who is influenced by another divine, Thor. Atelicus is influenced by another divine called Typhon, a dangerous and powerful one, if I remember correctly. Of all of the Titans, Atelicus was the one that I was concerned with the most. When you face Atelicus, if you struggle, if Atelicus is more than you can handle, Contact me, and I will grant you my aid. If he threatens Siaska's rebirth, I will come. How, how can I contact you, especially if you're in astral space? Either you will find a way, or I will still have many eyes on Erois. Oh, of course, yeah, I got rid of that. Smiles. Waves. I have no need to spy on you as I once did. The other is a warning for you, Vortensar. Shansara and Harmony, they've shut off communications from my Imperial orders, my command. They've installed devices to prevent communication. Oh, that explains that then. I tried to contact my brother, who is not in Vortensar. You need not worry with me. There are no other forces to listen here. This is a warning for you, for one who has given me respect and at least been willing to talk. A recompense, perhaps. Shansara and Harmony are obsessed with returning Vortensar to Ganesh. I believe that it is a part of your Harmony's nature because they represent all people. They are more connected to Ganas than perhaps even I realized. They have become obsessed with returning there. And Shinsara is following this duty that she's been given, feeds into her ego. She has become convinced of her own legend that the Ganassi have created for her. I have ordered them to stop, but they are ignoring me. It seems that I do not have just one rebellious force within my army. Perhaps my grip is not as strong as it once was. Be careful. Their plans to transport Vortensar back may work. They are intelligent, but what they are hoping to accomplish is a great deed. It may have disastrous consequences. Is, is there a way you can delay the teleportation project? I have done what I can. I've ordered them to stop, and in some ways, I would not wish to refuse the Ganassi who wish to return home. 
I'm not asking for stopping it, just delaying it so we have time. I will speak before I leave. I will send a message to whatever agents I can and ask them to aid in the sabotage that I know your forces are at work there. I, mm, thanks. I am no fool. I know. I'm going to try and find these answers. When you have, when you have done what needs to be done, and the problems of Aroas are resolved, you will have my answer to your greater questions. Goodbye, Nova Vija. Just be safe. <laughs> I have lived a very long time. Do not worry about me. I do worry about you, that's the problem. Spicy. And that, I did, I really wanted to get those in. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I know, was like, that was worth it. That was really worth it. It's like when you guys, I was like, so you guys want to take a long rest? And you were like, no, let's do this role play thing. I was like, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. that's fine. Hey. That's what the game is. The game's about role playing. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna keep talking to each other and wasting time. <laughs> I had a I just like, a teacup. It was just like, I knew you guys would want the dreams, so I was like, I want hey, the dreams. Oh, yeah. what, what if dreams? it's gonna take this long to get my revenge for Smeek, yeah. then I'm gonna do it. <laughs> uh, that's it, we're gonna end the episode there. I mean, Sam, I know like, if you do need to shoot off, I'm sure that we can sort of end the stream and stuff, uh, right? Yeah. We can't we yeah, say, yeah, like, this is fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we wanna read Donies and stuff like that, so. Uh, that's right, I gotta, that's the end of the episode. Thanks very much. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.